Hey everybody, welcome back to Neural Nexus Zero. We are here despite Twitch try trying to fight us. Um, I don't know what Twitch has against us between Twitch and Nate's Knife Pit. Uh, we are lucky to be live right now. So listen, listen, aliens, lizard oh, aliens God. are trying to control. <laughs> they're trying to control the broadcast, man. Trying to control the interwebs, man. Right. Like aliens, bro. They're trying to stop the signals, Mal. They're trying to stop the signals. Illuminati. That's all I'm going to say. Can't stop the signal, man. Can't stop, won't stop. Illuminati confirm, guys. Illuminati confirm. I'm literally oh sitting in a triangle God. right now. <laughs> it's all the Freemasons' fault. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a Wait a minute. I, I, I actually wa I watched a video the other night on how the Freemasons are going to take over the world, so that was interesting. So, oh, so you built your plan now, do you? Your yeah. seven-step guide. You <laughs> you yes. Hey, was it an internal, <laughs> was it an internal video or was book. it an external video? <laughs> <laughs> I think they called it an HR video that I, I was supposed there to watch. Go. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wow. Did Wolfsblood make it? Because he makes a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> wait, is he a Mason? Is Wolfblood a Mason? No, he just, that's what he does. He makes personal videos for his company. That's all oh, he does. Oh, okay. Oh. We might have to retain his services, but then we'd have to kill him for afterwards. So, I mean, is that, that, that unfortunate part, right? Just, just feed him to lizard aliens. It's okay. Recycle, cre creative recycling. That's what we'll call it. There, there you go. There you go. You're being environmentally conscientious. <laughs> Everybody, it's part, well, green, as, it's part of the Freemasons' green lookout outlook. It so. is. It's the uh, the new initiative. And uh, as when he just turns off all of our like our green screen effects, and it's just nothing but six green icons is like oh no we're one of them already you know what's funny i could legitimately just make a macro so that like you could to drop all you to hide all you those scenes and oh man that'd be hilarious <laughs> just boop boop you know what i mean like an illuminati confirmed <laughs> all right i might get bored this week who knows <laughs> oh yeah with all that ample free time i mean <clears throat> Now, uh, I'm furloughed, so Amen. they keep on pushing it week off. Week, they're like, you're going to be back to work next week, and then th that week comes. Then you're going to be back to work next week. Uh, sad face. Anyway, guys, it is Monday night, right? Monday? I think it's Monday. I think so. They're all kind of blending some day in. Of the week. It is one of the days of the week, guys. Uh, welcome back to Neural Nexus Zero to the How I Nerd channel. My name is Mike. We do TTRPG content here. And, uh Hello, Mike. Hi, Logan. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. First time talking, long time watcher. <laughs> oh, my God. Can I talk about that voice for the rest of the stream, please? Please. <laughs> As you execute somebody, be like, Hi. Hi, Faya. How you doing? Just want to kill you. you. <laughs> Anyway, oh my sorry, god! I, I derailed everything. I oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I needed it. I needed this. Nate, oh you broke it again. God. Anyway, um, so guys, it is Monday night. It is time for Neural Nexus, uh, the connection to the Nexus, to be opened once again. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Neural Nexus Zero is a cyberpunk adventure set in a 1980s <laughs> retro wave Boston, using the Savage World system, played remotely using the Fantasy Ground framework. We have a wonderful cast of players here, uh, and uh, you know, we uh, we've had a little problems with technology issues, like in, in United States infrastructure things keeping us uh, not from streaming as much as we'd like to. But uh, this is episode eleven called Neutral Ground. Uh, <laughs> Show's cursed. <laughs> wow. I, 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 will, I will stab wow. you. I will <laughs> stab you in wow. the face. Come wow! Come get, come get it. So violent. Wow, That's... he will contract Loken to go stab exactly. you. Exactly, <laughs> like he will. He will straight commissar you. Hey, hey, if if I get contracted to do this, can my payment be power armor and a railgun? Just you know, just so happen to be the payment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> this is on his bed with some bubble wrap on it, just like ha. Uh... <laughs> like all of a sudden, just like a truck shows up, Loken, and a, like a big four truck just drops this giant crate off in the street for you, and you're like. <laughs> Crackheads like, from as far oh as the eye can see. Just <laughs> the sudden sound of the impact so guns and a bunch of homeless dudes come running at the crate. Oh my yeah. god. Dr Draconic says tosses in the EMP. 
<laughs> can't be shielding, sir. That's what it's there for. All right, guys, we uh. Oh, that's been ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I can Content writes itself. Jesse Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, so I want to check in with the cast of players in this uh, this dark noir drama. So we're going to start with the uh, our resident crackhead, Jesse Reigns, oh played boy. by Atomic Bad Zero, move. is no. uh, is <laughs> and soon to be. He's a member. Of, uh, he's the cast of this show, uh, a longtime member of our community, and he is also going to be a DM on one of the shows on the channel coming up for uh, Star Wars Fantasy Flight Games which we are all excited for, so. Surprisingly good one, too. Yes, all those things are happening, and uh, I'm relatively still very new, uh, re or getting back into my into my streaming, old old streaming career and everything else and all that fun stuff. But anywho, uh, yeah, doing good. I uh, was uh, sick over the weekend, but feeling a lot better now with a lot of renewed energy. COVID? And, uh, no, thankfully, okay. wasn't okay. that. Like, literally, when I started to feel sick, I was like, oh, shit. I went to, like, the very first <laughs> thing that looked smelly. I was like, shit. Oh, thank God, I can still smell. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was just like some weird bug. But anyway, and uh, Jesse is just like currently uh, waiting to hear back from his little sweet thing. Cause he's just like, hey, man, she opened all my selfies. Why isn't she responding? So like, that's like the only thing he's really caring about right now. So here's the thing about that. Oh, boy. Dr. James Dunn, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> mm. Dr. James Dunn is played. I'm going to give you a little introduction. I'm right. Okay. I, I asked you and I cut you off right as I, as I forgot. That's fine. I was just doing a nice soft sigh for the box. The, the, just think about the box that we're gonna have to put Jesse in when, when, um, uh, all, we get all the parts uh, back when, when Karanta, you know, manages to, to return all the parts of him that she, yeah, she, no, she, she might be your prison mate. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Roomies again. <laughs> oh my god. Uh so Dr. James Dunn is played by the Astro Pub, who is a full time partner. Oh a, a, a full time partnered streamer. Uh he has the best uh the best pub in the universe. And uh look at him. He's a gorgeous man. It's a handsome devil. He is. Look at that. Look at that. And he's got that great hoodie on too, so <laughs> I, I would buy him a fish sandwich yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a glass of cavatier. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, Doctor James Dunn, how are you doing? And uh, how is uh, what's what's going on in your character's mind at this point? All right, so I'm doing good. I, I took last week off mostly, um, so I, I enjoyed a little bit, a little, little bit of time off, did some other things, um, and um, uh, as far as Doctor James Dunn, he is. Trying not to go back to jail, um, but also trying to be the the talky guy and is managing to insult every cop he can find. By well, the I end mean, of yeah, by the end by the end of, of by the end of this game, he's going to be wanted by every single. He's either going to be like the chief of police or wanted by every single cop in the entire city. I mean, you could be both, right? <laughs> It could, it could, yes. it's ready. Why not both? <laughs> That's my goal. The end, end goal for Dr. James Dunn is to become chief of the Boston PD while being the number one most wanted uh, criminal in the entire city. Listen, I'm just saying in Massachusetts, it's pretty much been done already. Yeah. We've all we've all heard of Jimmy Connolly and you know the FBI and Whitey Bulger. I'm just saying yes. it's been a thing. It's been done. And his brother was the head of UMass Memorial and a senator, I believe. And a senator. And a senator. And a senator. Yeah. And I'm and just senator. saying. Yeah. There is precedent for that with organized crime in Massachusetts. <laughs> So. Um, mo mostly he's just trying to unweave the web that's being before him. Um, he's, he's, I think probably partially relieved that it's not aliens, that it's not the lizard people trying Who to take over the wasn't? world, that it's, that it's just normal humans and mega corporations, Who's... you know, that's, 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 that's normal. He can understand that, but the well, lizard aliens are freaking him out. You're listening to a conspiracy theory from a man who swills protein drinks and lifts heavy things over his head. Can we, can we? Get a little perspective here. Perspective on this. <laughs> yeah. Perspective on this. Yeah. The dude's a gym rat, and he's got a conspiracy yeah. theory, and he's the brains. What? <laughs> I. 
D James is not a consp is not is not a thinker when it comes to this kind of things. He can just use a good mouth. That's all. <laughs> He's he can he he knows how to how to how to sew people back up and install cyberware. He's not exactly the man who's going to tac tactfully invade you know uh, super mega corps. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so you could say you're a ripper doc. There you go. Doc, basically, yeah. It's true. It's absolutely true. That is what I am. Cyclone Jack, how you doing? A Cyclone Jack, competitive Mark Warrior streamer, power lift. Well, gym enthusiast. What would you call it, Jack? Your level of involvement in that in that lifestyle. Uh, former competitive power lifter, current gym rat. Okay, I like it. I like it. There's a difference. Yeah, I don't compete anymore. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Welcome to me. <laughs> um, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, things are, things are interesting. It's been a, it's been a fun weekend. We had a tele uh, tabletop tavern yesterday, which was a lot of fun, barring a few internet issues, which happened in the worst moments possible in the story. But, um, it was a good weekend. It was relaxing. It was chill today. Kind of winds up my weekend and, uh, I get to end it off with some of the coolest guys on the net I found and, uh, the coolest Nexus port I've managed to find. So thumbs up. Awesome. All right. Let's move on to who should who, who should we go to next? Let's go to uh, David Grayson. David Grayson is played by Look and Plays, partnered streamer, captain, who recently I I, I am very pleased to say has been promoted to admiral. Uh, the people have <laughs> voted. Um, I think they had guns to their heads as they were walking to the booth, but <laughs> no. he has definitely been promoted to admiral and uh, all around good dude. So. Just it's just my uh, my lit step in my campaign to become an imperator, of course. You know, as it goes. Listen, I'm just saying, <laughs> take me with you. I am not afraid to torture people. So if you need oh, whatever, whatever you need done, I will. I, I'm, I'm taking. I'm, I I'm need doing. a capable. I need a capable uh, cleanup crew. So, <clears throat> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But no, um, I'm alive. I'm good. Personally, I'm fine. Um, been a tough couple of weeks. Not gonna lie, twitches and so the industry in a whole has been a bit weird. So I actually took the first day off. I've taken in about four months off oh. yesterday, and it was lovely. It was lovely. Did just you do anything fun? Or did you just take some breathing room for your brain? It was weird. Oh, no, I just took some breathing room. I just slept more than anything else. I just slept and just didn't worry about anything. I just literally switched off Discord, switched everything else. I'm just like, you know what? Bye bye, bye bye for an hour, 24 hours. Yeah, just done. Mental. You know? It was cleansing. Cleansing for the mental health. I had to do it last week. I oh, yeah. shut off social media because the world was erupting. Uh, we dealt. Yep. We needed to deal with at that point. But then it was like, I'm mentally exhausted by this, so I'm going to take some time for myself. Which it it was like that. It was mentally exhausting. But yep. you know, hey, there you go. It's the industry, isn't it, at the moment? Uh, as yeah. for David, David is um, well, just standing around waiting for uh, the next set of orders. David could, and uh, I will, and, and invariably give his opinion on things. Uh, and probably work things out, but uh, he's he likes to focus his considerable intellect and brain power on how best to angle his bullet to make sure he hits that headshot just so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is, that's his thing. I mean, that, I, I actually realized the other day I have a character smarts of like eight, so I'm up on the more intelligent party members. I don't use it. <laughs> I but just you, use my gun. So think about it, though. Like, there, uh, intelligence manifests in many different ways, right? You can be book smart. You can be street smart. You can be, you know, uh, uh, like tactically ta smart. Ta tactically smart, which you tend to portray with your character more often than not. Yeah. David is a military tactician. He's less about the whole... He's more of the guy that you go to once you've got the intelligence together and says, hey, that over there, we need that. Okay, done. Type okay. thing. So anyway, that's that's David. He's currently meandering around looking at a dead body and otherwise just kind of wondering what the hell's going on in life. Awesome. That's about it, really. <laughs> Anton Verikov, play, played by Dr. Dune, our resident video and production expert who has made your experience with the podcast and YouTube uh, standardized for your enjoyment. How are you? Hi. How are you doing, Anton? <laughs> Hello there, Anton. But yes, that is that is me. Uh, it, it's been a bit of a slow week, but yeah, uh, the backlog on the podcast marches ever onward. Um, Tabletop Tavern is pretty much up to date. Uh, Neural Nexus Zero is slowly becoming updated. I just put up episode six today. So this thing included, that's only five more. And then we move on to, was it Tabletop 2 and then Tails? And hopefully that should be done by the end of July. Fingers crossed. 
Excellent. Go to crack that whip. Mm -hmm. And then, Absolutely. We, then we go into maintenance mode where he uh, he handles it all week, and then he's that frees him up to do some uh, to do some uh, top ten moments and to do uh, fun things. To do fun things Whoa, rather than just tedious things. backlog things. Tell um, me more of this construct mm -hmm. is fun. I'm just saying, running a media empire. I I don't know. We we play games here, and Doc handles the the post shit for us, and he does it very well. So I'm appreciative of that. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad someone thinks so. Uh, <laughs> uh, and what is, yeah. your, what is your character thinking, Anton? How are you doing personally, and how is your character doing? Uh, like I said, personally, it's been a bit of a slow week. Uh, but on that, I'm I'm pretty good. Uh, Anton, on the other hand, is reaching for a brown paper bag to breathe into over and over again until it blows up. Uh, but yeah, he's he's trying to mull things over, put all the pieces back together that have just shattered apart. Cause, it, Cause he was starting to put them all together again and then just the panics throwing them all apart. And then he's trying to put them back together again as he calms down. And I'm excited, I'm excited to play this week. I'm excited to play next week. I'm excited to play every week. Why can't we play every day? I mean, we no, could, but still. we would have to do this as a full-time job. So if you want to pay us, we could do that. Yeah, by all means. <laughs> if you want to pay yeah. me for my time, by all means, I'm good for it. Almost nope. tempting. Almost <laughs> tempting. I would we have just to need it. Go on. I would have to spend a couple weeks getting some some content ready, my friend. So <laughs> every day, you every day, have all this stuff like ready and ready to go. Ready? I've got a oh, lot of geez, what kind, kind of DM are you? A bad one. Oh god. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest here. <laughs> um. All right, guys. So it's about that time. If you're here for the first time tonight, what I like to do at the at the top of the hour on the show before everybody gets going is I like to have our players roll and whoever gets the lowest roll does a recap from the previous week. So let's let's get some rolls, Cass. Yes. No. Oh, it's a oh, <gasps> wow. The promise wow. Wow. <laughs> what do you guys got? I got a 20. Yes! Oh, there it is. <laughs> yes! Generation! The so. first roll didn't land on the board and was a 16. God. <laughs> so what do you guys all get? Uh, Jesse got an 18. David rolled a 6. James got a 6. Anton is finally free of his dice curse with a natural 20. You th It's just one week. Let's be honest. Just one week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it has to pay me back for those five I did in a row. Okay. Zero found Gunner's dice and rolled a four. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Don't worry. Here comes some Bennies to compensate you for your bad luck. Well, as you, as you guys read that, I'm going to hand out Bennies and then we'll announce it. So, Okay. So, uh, last we left off, or last we started last session, um, we were at a, uh, a, a dock in the box, a uh, pop-up first aid medical station. And um, the doc was trying to schmooze and talk about an interview and buy time for Anton, who was breaking into a uh, secure little node for some information for us to see if we could find anything else about Lorna. And well, I mean, things were going pretty well. We even managed to set out an Android to screw with uh, Jesse, which was pretty entertaining as uh, Zero and uh, David were in the trunk of the car. So, you know, typical stuff as usual is Jesse keeps asking if he can shoot it. <laughs> and that's when things went sideways. Um, immediately, after some prodding and poking and, and probing, Anton gets a, uh, an alert that totally sets him off kilter and uh, addresses him by actual real legal name and says, don't worry, Anton, we're on the way. <clears throat> so, at which point Anton goes... Screaming through the halls like a sissy la la, looking for James and trying to exit stage right even. Um, and we all pile back into the car as you know we can hear sirens and stuff in the distance, and we take off. So as we take off down the road, everybody panics. Everybody's trying to figure out what to do, how to do things, and we meet up down by the piers after we lose tails and people chasing us and things going on. And Zero gets this epiphany, as it were and starts to break down what's actually happening because it doesn't seem like the whole team's on the same page of what could be and what's possibly happening. <clears throat> and Zero, with his crayons and his coloring book, kind of plays connect the dots, <laughs> figures some stuff out, has a couple ideas, and said, hey, look, this is what he thinks, which 
I can get into detail of, but it'd be a lot better if you guys listen to the story and hear what he actually thinks. So we eventually decide that we're going to go back home and figure some things out. And uh, of course we do get very, very close to the house before a shot rings out, which as we once again run for our lives and hide, uh, the illustrious David Grayson and, and uh, Zero figure out that uh, it is a 6-5 Creedmoor round and uh, it is definitely not a standard street issue round. This is, this is something special and these are not regular run-of-the-mill guys that want us dead. Which further concrete Zero's, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to call it a conspiracy theory or actual like theory theory, but um, we all decide that uh, we needed to do something from here. And of course, we find out that uh, James's new girlfriend, as it were, uh, is D.E.D. dead. And almost instantaneously, um, we all get phone calls and messages from a certain Boston PD officer that um, I believe Jesse calls hot lips. I'm not <laughs> sure of terminology. Um, but it's we, sweet course, thing, God, sweet, sweet, sweet thing, thing, hot lips, sugar sweet mama. Thing. You've we called it so many names, things. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, seriously. So we uh, we head over to uh, meet up there, and um, while we're speaking to uh, quote unquote sweet, sweet thing, me and uh, a couple others, uh, the vehicle with our remaining two adventurers is approached by, um, well what we believe might be the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which our Boston PD officer, the ever illustrious, um, tells us that there is no more FBI in the city and that we're all out of our mind. So the next question is, if it wasn't the FBI that set up a meeting with us, an appointment, who was it? Was dun, it dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> there was a... a, a um... A, a cliffhanger, but I don't remember what the cliffhanger was. Does anybody remember? You received a call. Yeah, I think. It, I think someone got a call. I think it was. Wasn't I think me. Two people Just got me. calls. I can't remember. Yeah, I Who never get called specifically. <laughs> I thought it was Doc you know, and James. You know how to answer a phone, Jesse? You, you just like smack it until like the button beeps. <laughs> Sometimes they don't talk. Sometimes they do talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the cliffhanger was uh, Anton had spent some time uploading a file that he had found oh. to a website oh, to get yeah. some answers. That's what it for. was. And then yes. what happened to that site, site, Anton? The entire site went down. Not even just that post. The entire thing. He started freaking the F out. Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god someone please get that for an emote I'm gonna start. Yeah, that would have been that's bad. i'm george, gonna i'm gonna start tacking on yeah sorry god no 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 the george suit i i he's got a greek last name suliopis or what the, yeah, yeah, alien. Yeah. yeah yeah so i'm gonna tack a little onto it it's no longer the just the regular lizard illuminati aliens it's now the lizard robot aliens from the illuminati because if they took down a website, they got to be part robot, right? Paid by the Russians. Exactly. Paid by the Russians. So the Russian robot Illuminati aliens. Yep. Yes. Lizard aliens. Let's Sorry. just start let's... from the center of the earth. Let's keep tacking stuff on. <laughs> let's just keep tacking stuff on. Moleman? The Mole ultimate Man. Doctor Who villain. <laughs> Damn, Damn. They're, they're Damn. actually Side. they're Daleks. That's what they are. <laughs> just I Daleks, mean, it, straight up. Like, like straight up Daleks, because that takes care of the robot part. It takes care of the They're aliens all, part. The alien part. The reptile. And, reptile. Yeah. They're just yeah. all Cylon. They're just Cylon. Yeah. Cylon Dalek yeah. mix. For the center of David the David Cylons riding the Daleks into battle. <laughs> crap people. Wow. Oh, crap people. Crap, crap people. people. <laughs> Am I just basically in a party full of conspiracy theorists? Listen, listen, wait until it happens to you, because it will happen to you. <laughs> it's yeah, infected but you know, us one by one. <laughs> one by one, we've all had the experience. I could tell be like, you what's happened to me, but unfortunately I have to kill you. It's all got a lot of black ink all over it. What's, what's going to happen know. to David is that David's going to get captured, and then the the the, uh, the, the, the 
the person who's interrogating him, the FBI agent who's interrogating him, is going to blink his first set of eyes, then his second set of eyes, <laughs> and 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 David's going to go, "Oh my God, there are aliens!" I'm uh, just go, well, aliens. that's new. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all he would do. He would sit there. There'd be no reaction. He'd be like, "Interesting." I put this down in my log. Does it bleed? It's it's totally all right. If you guys don't know, I didn't tell you. Government, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But David Grayson's name in the military was Captain Pinchy. Captain Pinchy. <laughs> yep, Captain Pinchy. 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 Little pinch. I pinch. I pinch. Do you hold the knife in one hand like this? Like you like like this? We can't see you. Oh, that's right. You can't <laughs> see me. My bad. I can see it. <laughs> No, I do not hold the the knife in my hand like that. Thank you. I hold it like a normal human being. Jeez. Well, I mean, you get the crab claws. You got to hold it like human that crab with being. the knife. You know what I These mean? These are not crab claws. They're hands. Look at them. Uh, I have Dave, to surgically attach to everything. David rolls up his power suit. It's Roberto. It's time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> I've named him Roberto. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, All right. We should All probably right. get playing. Um... Do you guys want to play some Savage Worlds? I mean, yeah, why not? Please. We're here. Like, yeah, I'm good. I think we we'll, could. we'll just sign up tonight. I mean, good. this is just much more fun. <laughs> I, just, I just like to point out, I just like to put out a small fact. We're right now, we're sitting at 195 subs on the channel. I think we could hit 300 tonight. Atomic, Whee! make that happen. 300. On it. Let me get my wallet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Start dumping gift subs, boy. <laughs> All right. Man. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Guys, my name is Mike, and we're about to get back into this game. Um, Nexus initialization complete. When we last left off, Anton had uploaded a file to a website uh, that he had discovered on a private network. He was looking for answers uh, when it came to this. Um, and as he uploaded it to the site, um, and he sat back and uh, let the net do its thing. Um, 74chan, I think, was the actual site uh, at this point. 74, <laughs> 74chan. And um, the site actually disappeared. Uh, when Anton had gone back and refreshed, uh, when Anton going back and refreshed, the site was gone. He did he did a who is uh, on the site, and it was like the domain registrar completely pulled the site and it never had existed. Um, so it is in fact gone. Anton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Give uh, me a uh, knowledge programming me. or a ha yeah, knowledge, knowledge programming. programming. All right. We're going to use that for and general computer it. knowledge for you. Okay. Eight plus one for a nine. All right. So when your experience with the, uh, the net out there and websites in particular, right, you know, data is cached out there. So theoretically you should be able to go to the site and get a cached version of the site. However, every time way you try back machine, I know, oh. I know the, <laughs> the way back machine. <laughs> um, it is gone from the Wayback Machine. It is any cached version. You cannot even find a cached version of the uh, the site. So Jesse's the only That's one around. That's my odd. The data is completely deleted, brother. It is gone. Scrubbed. Scrubbed. <laughs> hey, Ed, you're quiet back there. Yeah. Want some more candy? No, no, no I think I think I'm good now, Jesse. All right, all right. Uh. I, I, I've never seen this before. That's a beer, man. It's not like <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you drink it before. God. I didn't mean that. I mean, the the site is gone. What? Site, man we're, we're I, in boston I, I was just talking online about trying to find some information and now the entire site is gone it doesn't exist anymore okay man you gotta explain it to me like i'm five what the fuck are you talking about okay site um, what site imagine gone, you went home way? uh huh and the building wasn't there why is the building gone that's why I'm confused. Wait, so a building as in a building site. So that's what you mean by site? Kind of. God, that's weird, man. Yeah. 
<sighs> so what'd you guys find out from Karanta? Because I'm stumped. They're not in the car. Oh, we're still, not, I'm walking. Still, yeah, I'm, I'm still walking back. It's literally to... the two of us in the car, which is oh, why okay. I, I thought they'd yeah. come back at this point. No. Timings. Imagine. All right. Well, uh, if, if that's time, I'm just kind of like sitting, just trying to figure this out. Like the whole extent of my knowledge programming is me checking for like cached versions while we're waiting for party two. Okay. All right. Um, let's pop it over to zero. James Dunn and David Grayson. What are you guys doing at this point? I'm just waiting for um, for Bobby to uh, Officer Karanta to finish her uh, just quick background. We've been we, we've been talking with her okay. and um, uh, what's his name? Oh, Angelo? I had his name somewhere. Angelo. Yeah. Angelo. Uh, so you see Bobby. She's when you would get back over there. Bobby is engaged. She's uh, in the Nexus. Her left eye is flickering back and forth. You can tell she's scanning scanning data very rapidly. Um, and after a couple minutes, uh, uh, you know, she she looks over. She, it's, she comes to and she looks over at Angelo and she kind of nods her heads and uh, makes a affirmative motion at you guys. And, uh, you know, she walks up to you, uh, James, and she's like, you know, it looks like it checks out. Uh, there is. We got to figure this out. Like, we got to figure we out. Do. We got to figure out why they're targeting you. Why? Like you specifically, James, on what do you have anything in common with these these people? These people? Nothing as far as I know. They're a demon cult. I'm just a doctor. So I'm gonna ask you thing... I'm gonna ask you this one time. Have you ever now are you now or have you ever been part of a demon cult? Wow. Hold on. No, <laughs> as far as my knowledge goes, unless the and, and unless the uh, uh, you know hospitals are considered demon cults now, and I didn't know about it, <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> as far as I know, they targeted me as because I was just a nice scapegoat when when uh, we were going to go see our friend who's missing uh, at the uh, at the rat. And now they're targeting me again for some reason. They may be tied into our missing friend again. Are you guys making? Why would they attack? Are you guys making any headway with uh, finding your friend? No. I'll look. We've up chased down them. all the leads that we can think of. What? Do you, so lay them back. Lay them on me. What have you done so far? Like what? What leads have you pursued? Okay. Maybe I can I help you work. At, maybe maybe if you look, lay this I, out for me, I can help you work through it. I look at David, and then I look at uh, at uh, uh, Zero, and I go. This is a good, good idea. Yes, no. The last gonna, time I, 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 I told anyone you guys have lost your mind, so. I'm going to look up from a rather engaging conversation with a couple of the cops about their uh, really rather lovely pistols they have. They have some really nice service weapons. And I'm going to wander over and just sort of like, you know, finish the conversation. So, yeah, all right, you know what, might as well. We haven't got anywhere so far. All of the single lead we followed has been a dead end. Perhaps uh, the officer here can help. I think don't think we have any other option at this point. And uh, right. yeah. you guys oh, go heard ahead, so. my theory. I believe, uh, I believe she can help. Okay. Well, we first ran down uh, to her apartment, found out that she has been doing some online activities of the of some sort of communications with other folks who are not exactly uh, happy with the government. Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, he's a reporter, paranoid, thinks the government has been infiltrated by megacorps. Ring a Sage? bell. Scorpio Sage? Is that you talking about? Scorpio Sage. Yeah, yeah. Ah. She was in contact with him. Really weird. Found some other information, but we're not making heads or tails of it. Uh, this is at her apartment, which was split, spot clean as far as we can tell. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a known agitator. Like, straight up. He's in, like... Oh, he tried to get us killed, so... You know, uh, that was fun. That, that was, was fun. fun. That was fun. Enough. Yeah, we we talked with him. We went to go talk with him because we figured, you know, he has contacted with her. Maybe he knows where she was. Maybe maybe she's just on the DL doing something. I don't know. So we go to talk with him. We go talk with him. He starts to call on about millionaires and lettuce and salad. A um, fixation on salad. Did really? he see? Yeah, zero. I've never zero, been close to him. I have a question. Do you? Did he? 
like so i've read his articles online and they, you know is he all there do you think he's all there i'm just gonna make this sign okay uh, i think from a medical perspective um, my my firm medical opinion he's um uh bucking futs all right okay knocking futs okay at this point okay um that's that's a clinical evaluation by the way um technical terminology do you think it's like yes. psychosis do you think like it's like clinically like paranoid or I, I think he's a paranoid he's paranoid because he's had one too many run-ins with um people whom he assumes are always out to get him okay anywho we go into this fine restaurant i can't remember the name of it really nice up upstanding looks like a junk on the outside but it was really swanky to get in um he is eating ravioli zero had the ravioli zero was the ravioli good oh it was amazing yeah he only eats half the ravioli uh uh he goes on about a bunch of conspiracy stuff and about how the system's corrupted and you know listen everybody loves a good conspiracy theory right like we like <sighs> I, like i'm gonna be honest to you you know like i live down here this is my this is my neck of the woods too and i've seen i mean we've all seen stuff we all know we're all realistic about how this world operates and you know we all try to run in our own circles within that and do the best we can i hope i hope i mean at least that's what i'm doing while i'm do what i'm doing but we know there's there's some shady shit out there right mm -hmm. i mean even angelo pops, angelo pops in he's like he's like you gotta do you know you got to work within the system we have to do the best that we possibly can, you know, and, you know, it looks like you guys are doing that. So, you know, if I can offer well, any help too, you know, well, here's the thing. He leaves, we go out, he, we had friends outside, luckily watching over us because we didn't, everything kind of look a little cloak and dagger. David over here manages to catch them as he sends in a hit team to come kill us. We're able to get away. And uh, from there, we go to uh, Father. I've been calling him Shotgun Preacher. And I feel bad about <laughs> Dab that. Dabdathos McGee. Dabdathos McGee. Father Dabdathos McGee, uh, the uh, the Shotgun Preacher. Um, he did have a very nice shotgun. He did have a very nice shotgun. He did have a very nice shotgun. He does shotgun weddings. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Um, you're not here. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk with him. He gives us a very detailed rundown of the situation. And that situation is that this symbol that we've been seeing, you've been seeing on these bodies is the symbol of a demon who is of illusion and tricksters and, and that kind of thing, which seems to tie in well with the whole that had the device that made his face look like mine and then somebody else's very uh very very seems nice to, there right seems to fit the fit the theme yeah. uh bobby i mean uh angelo says uh, that's all i uh all, all we figured out from him no other connections that we could tell from there we decide that we're gonna go talk to her ex you know who her, her ex is right or do i have to spell it out for you no that we all everybody knows that's come back down here yeah, the scumbag whose house is uh, an affront to the entire neighborhood and the entire community. Yeah, oh yeah, well, 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 So we talk with him. He's a scumbag. Um, but, you know, other than being a scumbag, he doesn't seem to really know anything. We talk to uh, some members of security forces that he happens to have who, wanted, who are willing to talk with us and find out that he's a scumbag, uh, who are also interested in what's going on. Um... They point us into the direction of a dock in the box. So we go to the dock in the box. I go into the dock in the box to ask some questions. We get ambushed. We run. On our way back to to uh, to our friend's house to collect some more information that we gathered at the uh, at the side of our um, at the side of uh, the apartment, uh, we get we get shot at by a sniper. Managed to escape. Okay. You call us. Tell us about the whole situation. The doc, the uh, the the preacher calls us and gives us the same information about what's going on, and then we show up here. Uh, at some point, we stopped for dinner. I think. No, that was that was last night. That was yesterday. Yeah. Actually, when was the last time we ate? I I 
Breakfast? Yeah, well, breakfast do we, yeah. do we have? To, uh, probably. Protein? Protein. Mm, protein. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> no, we had you had you had ravioli. That's what you I had. did. That was yeah. last night. I think you oh, had some. No, that was just today. That was this morning. Well, you ate, you ate at Laura's yeah. place too. That's yeah. right. I ate some of the food yeah. out of the fridge. That's right. You guys yeah. went. Out, you guys went out for dinner the other night and uh, met your the friend. Night, uh, yeah. Met your friend Stacks. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was a charming fella. Mm -hmm. But we're 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 running out of leads in terms of what's going on. But uh, zero here. Um, he's using some of that that big muscle in his head, and has a has a theory. <laughs> what do you? I, I do. Anto, uh, it, I'm sorry, Angelo pops up. Sarah, what are you thinking? What, do you, what what's your thoughts on the situation? Lizard aliens. Oh heavens! I say out loud. <laughs> he nods, kind of pursing his lips. Lizard aliens. Say, you didn't hear. Say say what? He he kind of like leans into him and like nods a little bit. You you didn't hear about the lizard aliens? David intervenes at this point and says, please ignore him. He believes there's a conspiracy theory going on along here. Perhaps you'd like to flesh out your theory, Zero. You want me to tell him about the lizard aliens? Yes, the... tell him about the lizard aliens. Oh, all right then. If... If, if there's one person right, lay it on me, lay it on me. Angelo's he's like it rolls up his sleeves <laughs> and he's like let's hear this lizard alien thing so what happens right is that when certain people make too many waves and uh they become too big influencers and they start rising back up and people notice they're making change the aliens don't want you to, you know, get out from underneath their thumb, okay? So, oh yeah, what happens is he pauses and he kind of looks around at the other cops around the scene, then he looks down at the body, and he kind of, like, leans down near the body, and he goes, Don't tell anyone, chica. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, like, stands up and brushes himself off, and he goes... They wipe you out so you can't tell or affect any change. They're actually getting orders from the robots, you know. So the lizards, they move and they got this like stealth capability. And they make sure nothing gets out. Just look out for the men in the dark suits, eh? Angelo starts looking yeah. around. He starts looking. <laughs> I step, step no, no, in. No, no. He, starts, he, like... he goes... Remember that show 50 years ago? Do you, uh, am I getting punked right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you guys no, pull my leg. No. Are you guys fucking with me? Come on. No, 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 no. no. He's he's a little bit more paranoid. I, I'm just pretty sure that the the this this cult of uh, of de this demon cult is actually you know run by lizard aliens who live in the center of the earth. Oh, that's heavens. a different I, story though. That's I'm a different. Gonna, I'm gonna not as crazy past, as this one. <laughs> I'm gonna push past James. I'm gonna push past Zero and say, look, I'm sorry. These two have substitute lizard aliens for mega corporations and all government conspiracy. That's where we're at right now. Okay, nothing to do with aliens. It's go however, it is obviously a high powered thing and it's going up <sighs> the chain. Yeah, but it's either that or it's either that or the uh the our our, the, our employer set us up it's probably be that too it's probably I remember sure you think peter <laughs> set you? you think peter might have set you guys up anything's impossible at this point we, we we're so out of ideas at this point we've done our best to try to try to track into these these things down we've run down rabbit holes this entire time every lead we've gone down has either resulted us in a nothing or being shot at and then the release we were shot at basically high i mean it was a 6.8 sniper rifle round 6.8 6.5 6.5 anyway <laughs> 6.5 millimeter uh, you know it was huge that's not something that the, the regular Joes and out here have access to, and the shot itself it was precision. It was perfect, almost, apart from it missed. Needless uh, to say, I believe that there are some particularly high powers in in, uh, in play here. So, let me tell you what we're over. looking at. Let, well, let me tell oh. you, you know, Angelo looks over Bobby Caranta, and you know they kind of they kind of lock eyes for a second, and. Uh, Angel looks at the the beat cops around them and he goes, uh, "Don't you guys go 
check that out over there. Check the, the water line. See if you can sign it, find anything down there. And uh, the, the B cops run off. So Angelo uh, presses his lips for a second and he just starts to think about it. And he looks at uh, Bobby and she kind of shakes her head. You know what I mean? And uh, he goes, I'll tell you what we're thinking. Um, look, this is the third, third girl that's come up dead in the last, you know, with this symbol. Mm -hmm. I mean... In law enforcement, we get a term for something like this, and it's called a serial killer. You know? Why does anyone want to murder wheat? Doesn't make any sense. Is he using wheat to kill them? Oh, no. Are they, all, for... are they all wheat? It's a series of kills that all exhibit the same evidence. He's Oh, size. like like a serialized... Sorry, I'm my bad. I... I got really confused for a minute there. Thank you for jumping in, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean... The girls are similar in appearance. Uh, they all have been deconned. They all, you know, they, they all have the symbol and they're all left out in public view somewhere, you know? I hate to say it, but I mean, Lorna fits the, the MO for this. And, but maybe she just hasn't been found yet. Have you, I mean, I'm assuming you guys have left her messages, right? She hasn't called you back? Every time no. I communicated with her, nothing. It appears that her her nexus is deactivated. Hmm. Yeah. Well, everybody seems to be distracted and talking. I fire off a rapid text to Bobby. It says, I don't trust him. Talk alone later. Okay. What can we what can we do to help? What can me and Officer Karanta do to help? <sighs> I mean You do owe us a favor, Angelo. It's true. So what can I do to help? Uh, honestly, is there any way you can get any more information on the last whereabouts of, of, um, of, of Lorna before she was missing. She was like before she... labeled missing. Hmm. Yeah, any kind of surveillance equipment, anything like that. Because I know you have cameras all over the city. So him and, and Bobby, and one of the so him and Bobby lock Go. eyes for a minute. And he says, uh, let me see what I can do. Can I give you a call tomorrow midday or uh, by end of day tomorrow? Let me see what I can do. Okay. Even now, even I have my, I mean, we all have limits, right? We all have people we have to report to. We all have to work within the system that we can. Even though maybe we step a toe around a little bit somewhere. Let me, uh. Hey, hey, maybe, may, Angelo, crazy idea. Maybe she's involved in the, in the serial killing thing. I don't know. Who learned That herself? might be good enough. She, she could be involved. I don't know. Mm. We have no idea what's going on. Maybe that might be a good justification for, uh. For, for for looking up looking up for her last layer about whereabouts for your upper your upper cases your your the, those folks above you who pay write the paychecks the upper cases the upper, upper cases case. instead of the lower cases you okay Jay? dr dunn you uh what, it's been hey, a long day take it it's been a long take, day all right just do this with me take a deep breath ready in and let it out okay Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say Jesse's the one with the problem. Um, oh, you've all got you've all got problems. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's evident. That's evident. Yeah. <laughs> fair, um, fair. Fair. Yeah. Let me see what I can uh, I can do for evidence, and uh, you know we can we can let's see if we. Uh, and get some tracing on where she uh, was like last where her her uh, her nexus reported in last mm -hmm. um it's gonna take some it, i'm gonna have to do some things uh but uh you know this is my you know i i take a lot of pride in how i you know how i operate down here so let me see what i can do i'll get i'll get to you by end of day tomorrow 
We would appreciate it. Sounds that. good. We are completely out of options otherwise. So Bobby looks at you guys and uh she's gonna uh she uh at this point Angelo walks away and he you know he reaches down to his tap and he starts to do something as he walks away. Bobby looks at you guys pretty shrewdly and she says, um I got somebody I can talk to that might know about things happening to women on the street. Yeah, Shimmer might know. Shiver. Sorry. Shiver might know. Shiver. 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 Um, let me I'll reach out to her tonight and uh I'll uh I'll reach out to you as soon as I hear any any information. That sounds good. The problem we have is that the longer it takes for us to find her, the less chance we're going to have, have oh, to find her. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going to be straight up with you. I think she's probably dead somewhere. Um, hopefully that's not the case for your sake. Uh, but typically when somebody goes missing in the, you know, in the hide, if they're not seen within, the, you know, like six to ten hours, they're, we usually find them in a... You know, either in the one of the waterways dismembered or like this. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. Doesn't seem like her style. She's she's a she was a lot more surprising in our in our investigation in terms of her skill set than than we realized. So ain't no ain't no um, no serial killer or cult gonna gonna drop in on her. She's too smart for that kind of thing. And especially after what happened at the rat, she's she was extra vigilant. So I don't think she, uh, if if she was taken out by these groups or her, on her own, then there's, I don't think she that, or I don't think they would get a drop on her. I think something else is afoot. Fair enough. Although that might be just wishful thinking on your part. You obviously have an emotional investment in the situation. Listen, That's true. listen, I, I don't just... want to, I don't want to see the subject of my city dead either. Well, I mean, some of them, you know. Speaking <laughs> of your friend, she holds up her phone, her Nexus, and it's like, ding, ding, <laughs> yeah. ding. Ding, listen, listen, ding. Officer Caranta, Officer Caranta. <laughs> I guarantee you he's nicer in person than he is uh, when he's nicer alone than he is with groups. You take him alone, he's a sweet kid. All right. Just go on a drive with him at some day and I oh, promise oh, you'll have oh, a good time. I don't think I don't think my girlfriend would like that. Bring her along. <laughs> <laughs> I want a I'm persuasion sure check. Mind. I want a persuasion <laughs> check. Oh my God. James, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> She's been awfully nice to us. Get the fuck out of here. Go. Go. All Go. right, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Karanta. <laughs> On the way back to the car, I'm going to look at Zira and James and just shake my head at this situation and pinch my nose. Like I'm just going to go, this is a nightmare. We better get paid more for this. This has been way over what we're getting paid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is some deep conspiracy stuff. By the way, when are you oh. getting to see the FBI guys? A little crazy. Don't you? Oh, are you in the car now? Are you? Yeah, we, we're back at the okay. car when he, when he says that. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, and I kind of tap, um, I tap uh, uh, Jesse on the shoulder. And I go, you're mm -hmm. barking up yeah. the wrong tree, buddy. But it's a beer. No, no, with 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 uh, Officer Caranta. He's not a tree. He, she's taken. She has somebody. Wait, how can she be taken if she has the, a person? She's she in a relationship. A... Ooh, I like it, Jack. <laughs> you're not. You're not her type. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, there are. Every person's Jesse's type. They all come crawling back sooner or later. <sighs> well, unless you suddenly become the opposite gender, I don't think that you're going to get much luck, sir. <laughs> Join the dots. I'll wait. <laughs> I just while, get quiet while, my head. He'll, he'll reach. He'll reach there eventually. He'll get it eventually. While Jesse is trying to connect the dots, <laughs> I forgot a key a key aspect of the show, and I'm going to correct that issue right now. Uh, we have had some redemptions tonight for our cast. A, a, quite a, a few oh, redemptions. Pennies, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've already actually awarded them, but... Damn. Let's see. Uh, Q-Man has redeemed a Benny for Jesse uh, to Jesse and the Wonder Car. 
Uh, <laughs> Q-Pan has, uh, <laughs> has redeemed a uh, Benny for David because he really needs it. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Pirate x -Core has redeemed for zero. Um, Orcist has given me a Benny. Um, Atomic Zero has named an NPC, so... He's going to be named <laughs> Jesse's the best. <laughs> All right. Um, Gardener Girl has bought a uh, Benny for David. <laughs> Thank um, you. Uh, that was mine. Let's see. Uh, Queen Elfie has redeemed a Benny for uh, Cyclone. Uh, David Grayson has been... Uh, I got to award this one. This just came in. Uh, David Grayson, Thanks, you Casey. have been awarded by KC. Uh, Nate's Knife Pit has redeemed a random encounter. So... <laughs> Um, uh, all right. So we also have a lot more. Uh, so let me make this bigger because there's a lot more of them. So, all right. Uh, Benny to zero from Elfie, Benny to Jesse from Elfie, Benny for Jesse from Wolf's Blood, Benny to James from Wolf's Blood, uh, Benny to Anton from Luna, Benny to Jesse from Luna, a Benny to, woo! uh, Benny to zero from Bat Duck, a Benny to Anton from Quaman, Benny to David from Pirate X Corgi. Thank you. Corgi. It, I don't know if that's on purpose, but I think it's better. Um, the Corgi is wonderful, it's glorious. Benny to Anton magical. from Gardener Girl, Benny to me from Gardener Girl, Benny to David from Isaac Revia, Benny to Anton you, from Isaac. Nate, Benny to Jesse from Nate, uh, Benny to me from Orc. Oh, that's a double up. Uh, Benny to me from Optimus Subprime for his Patreon, and another Benny to me uh, for his sub to the channel. And I think that's where we're caught up, guys. They, they were good to you guys tonight. They were very good to us, the, indeed. Good looking chat tonight. Good looking chat. All right, so we'll continue. Jesse, have you connected the dots yet? Are you di Are you drawing diagrams right now? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. I can hear the dial-up noise in his head. Right? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It is a gerbil in a wheel. Shut up. <laughs> Don't be crude. <laughs> All right, so... Anyways. What are you, what are you guys doing at this? I'm sorry. Oh, so as he's finished, he's doing that. It's like while he's processing that, um, uh, Ant. Hmm? So we've got a meeting with the FBI. Oh, yeah, he's been uh, quiet. Yeah. Hey, all the blood. Yeah, are we going to that? The FBI doesn't exist in Boston anymore. Yeah, yeah which is why we're going to go Give me a smart check, Anton. Smarts, you say? Yep. Okay. Pucha. That is a seven. An associate of the gentleman that you said you met. He didn't specify. Didn't specify what? what? Where? He specified where. He didn't specify who he's meeting. He said, the gentleman said to Anton that he, I, you're going to be meeting with an associate of mine tomorrow at two uh, o'clock. Yeah. At two o'clock. Right. It is at this point. I'm lean, going to lean against the car and just go, Anton, is it? possible you may have just got punked i mean maybe but i don't have any more leads well unless whoever you can this find person out how to get into a class one area whoever this person was he was one of the he was with the whatever the people were that shot the back of my car i yeah, don't know if that's that fbi or what but he he was with all of them anton do you remember mm -hmm. the uh the rest of the details of what was going on do you need me to recap that uh i mean very vaguely all right so I mean, he was he was calling me out for my online stuff do you remember where uh, you're supposed to meet though not specifically okay all right he just so, said on neutral ground and uh so in the next yeah you, you're supposed to meet him at bio ink uh bio ink designs at 2 p.m tomorrow uh and he clearly indicated if you do not show up or uh, you continue to do your behavior that he would be paying you a visit again. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I I don't have any more leads to go on, and I suppose it can't hurt. Do you want yeah. to Overwatch? I mean, that's why I'm not as worried about it. I mean, if you just make sure the area is secure and i'm not gonna get shot from some window well, uh i mean either it's the actual fbi and somehow they've materialized back in boston even though they've been gone for how many years i, I don't 40 know. years yep. or 
it's some other organization to which won't be as nearly as well organized and i'm having i i feel as though it's probably going to be the latter that's I'm, I'm curious i'll shrug my shoulders and look at everyone i'm curious what about you guys it probably could do something with lorna as well maybe all of our pushing the poking the hornet's nest some phone some finally got someone to crawl out of a hole now oh, you've already shot at type out with high pad sniper rifles couldn't hurt to go and find somebody who claims to be the fbi yeah i mean yep. he, what he was wearing it probably cost more than three months rent oh nice suit then yeah i mean i, I really don't have any more ideas so if you yeah. guys don't have anything we should just get some rest and meet up tomorrow i guess I mean, I'm good with that. It's been a hell of a day. Although, is it safe to even go back home? I mean, last time we went to one of our houses, I mean, <laughs> a lovely new hole just appeared in the back of the uh, of the car. To be fair, they're going after <sighs> Ant. This is true. Bye, we can go back to no, your. Sorry. We can we can go back to your to 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 your place. I'm oh, sure okay. Ant well, can crash out on a couch or something. I suppose we could have one more. Person I mean, we could there. probably make a bed out of some more of the cats. <laughs> we threw away all the cats. cats. We got oh, rid of the cats. The damn, cats that's right. We got rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. Except for the one in the closet. Was it Mr. Whiskers? Oh, we don't talk about Zero? Mr. Whiskers. Snuggles. Snuggles. Yeah. Mr. Snuggles. Same with Mr. Snuggles. <laughs> you, uh, there's some place to sleep, I'm sure. Probably. Who knows? I've slept in worse places. Don't Looks worry. like you're coming to bunk with us tonight. <sighs> Besides. They're coming on, on, on your home turf now. You know the lay layout. And last mm -hmm. night we almost were killed by a radioactive rat. Yeah. yeah. So what? they're going to have to deal with a radioactive rat if they're going to try to come into your place. Oh, it's it's a long story. There was a large radioactive rat that decided to try and kill us. It's just normal. It happens time to time. Nothing to really, you know, cool. worry about. Uh, there you go, Jesse. That is a, that is a raise. So you get one free. That is a raise. You get one freebie. Caught Betsy, you uh, you drop your interface into the uh, the the port of Betsy, and uh, I'm gonna Bet do a I'm gonna do a donut before I peel out, just as close <laughs> to the cops as possible, and then we just say no. <laughs> just <laughs> I am go gonna remind you that there's consequences in life for your actions. <laughs> <sighs> you act like Jesse knows that word. The DM has been kind till now. I yeah. just like. It's just fine. He'll do like a big fish tail and then like pull out. Okay. He's trying. He has to like maneuver away from the curb. So you're fish, but you're fish tailing out of there. Yeah, I'm. I am aggressively removing my vehicle from the side the side of the road and continuing on my way. He's not doing a burnout, but he's he's he, as he's pulling out, he is fish tailing a little bit. Um, That's what he's trying to say. As have some fun. As you're ripping out of there, uh, you get a message on your Nexus. Uh, and uh, uh, Jesse Reigns. Oh, okay. And I look down. It's from oh, Bobby Caranta. Hey, this sweet thing. And I hit open. As it opens, uh, a citation comes up with it, and you have been fined 25 credits for <laughs> driving in a car. <laughs> oh, that is Finally. Oh, man. oh, man. She knows the type of foreplay I like. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Jesse. Oh, eternal Jesse. optimist eternal you, optimist. you know what they Jesse. say once you get with jesse it gets messy yeah <laughs> oh my god i fucking quit Do you know? <laughs> they did say that once uh and then she filed a restraining uh, a, a restraining order <laughs> oh my god don't you remember yeah oh, oh, my oh god. jesse doesn't do anything with it he just deletes it and goes back to driving <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. oh my god all right all right all right. We'll take the 25 credits off when you pay it. So, uh, if you cheat. When? 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 I mean, oh it could become a thing. I'm just saying. Student yeah. PM. Um, <laughs> I start driving Wait. back towards our, our place. Okay. All right. You guys oh make God. it back in about 25 minutes. Uh, there's a lot of looky loos in the area. It takes a little bit. It takes you a little bit to get out of this area. Uh, the cop. Uh, that you saw previously flips you off as you uh, as you drive away, and then he, and then he, <laughs> and he shakes his finger at you and like he, like I'm watching you type of thing, and uh, um, like I said, it takes about 20 25 minutes to get back to your uh, your place. Uh, you drive through 
the the war zone that is the hide um to get back to your uh your house you pull up to the curb um and you're at home uh before like i turn off the car i'm like can i look around to see if there's any other awaiting person to put another hole in my car uh give me an notice roll please I got it right, guys. I, I said the right roll. Wow. Yay. Right, you go to uh, I got one raise uh, with a seven. No, that's not a raise. You need eight. No. Raise. Um, uh, but you do not see anything out of the ordinary. I notice as... I notice there's only a four. I got a raise on my four. No. Uh, you. No, a no. success is a four, and then every four after the that is, is a raise. raise. So, so you're. Oh, I thought it was so just a raise on the four. dice. No, I got a no, four no, no. on the dice and the and the the D four re rolled. I thought that was a raise. No, no, that's, no, called, no. that's called an explosion. Yeah. Never mind. I retract my statement. Go on. Four eight twelve sixteen. <laughs> Hashtag pro streamer. <laughs> oh god. Oh man. All right. So you look around and you don't see anything out of the ordinary except for the usual. Um, I'm gonna call them your brethren. You know the yep. the the crackheads of the night and uh, you know <laughs> the. Uh, the street kids running around, you know, tossing garbage around. Um, the children yeah. of the night, if you were. The children of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I parked the car. Cool name, I parked the car. Uh, I guess let everyone get in. Everybody you can get, get out. Oh, yeah, like I parked the car. I get out. If you guys want to sleep in the car, fuck it. Fine. Like, <laughs> I get out of the car. Just wanders off. Yeah, just like, <laughs> okay. Just wanders off into the darkness. Um, yeah. I I I I get out of the car, but then I look at everybody else and say, "I'm not going to be the, the I'm not going to be the beginning or the end of this line. I'm be somewhere in the middle." I get someone out with I a big mic here. How someone with a I, large firearm is going to go in there first, and someone with a large uh, firearm should go in last. I will audibly sigh as I get out of <laughs> the car, and I just I I'm I just I grab my my pistol from its usual storage cubby basically it's a little, this little secluded spot and uh i i said fine i'll lead it's i i guarantee it's fine though he Take guarantees it rear. he guarantees it it's t- take the tone it's sarcasm <laughs> <laughs> um Hang on. All right, yeah, you guys, uh, you guys uh, make your way into the apartment building. Um, you know, uh, crazy Miss Jenkins down the hallway is is yelling and screaming that the uh, the kids won't shut up, and you know, you uh, you see, you know, somebody passed out in the hallway with a bottle in their hand, and you know, somebody's clearly drawn drawn a uh, mustache on them, and uh, uh, you make it your way is over. The, to- is the bottle empty? The bottle is empty, sir. Damn it. As we I take the bottle from his hand. Up, as we proceed up, I'd like to, of course, as always, in, in, in the usual David Grayson way, check the corners, check the, everything else, and make sure Absolutely. nothing's out of the ordinary. Absolutely. Yep. I cover so up the is... rear, and as he makes entry, I push Dunn to the side, and I proceed to cover opposite him. And, and he's going to mockingly start audibly, doing the Mission Impossible theme. Audibly <laughs> clear, as it is clear. Okay. I, 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 what I'm going to do is check the guy who's drunk. First off, I'm going to take the bottle from his hand, then I'm going to check his pulse as we pass him just to see if he's alive. He is alive. You uh, you okay. put your hand down over his, you know, rather than, you know, he's covered up, he's got, you know, uh, long clothes on. Rather than that, you put your hand down over his face to, and you face feel his breath. To, to check the breathing. Yeah. 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 I'm going to half look over my shoulder and say, he's always like that, you know. Always. It's, second, it's my second night here, man. I take the bottle, I put his hands, I make sure his hands are like like in more of a reasonable position. So he's not like like, bleh, but more like like his hands over his like he, he almost like he meant to sleep there. Okay. I, like I okay. pat his drunk ass on the shoulder and go, don't die. <laughs> and then let, I take walk a away. fresh I take a fresh beer, put it in his hands, and keep walking. <laughs> wow. Man, wow. you guys are generous. That's yeah, an entire thing. beer. That's nice. That stuff's expensive, man. Yeah. All right, you guys make it back to the apartment. Uh, you stand in front of the door. And uh, what do you do? I just he just goes in. <laughs> he just pushes by. Him. He just I'm, goes I'm in. just gonna I'm gonna put like a hand up just to, just to wait. I'm gonna let use Jesse as literally a human guinea pig. So we'll see <laughs> if anyone's inside because he'll die or not. <laughs> Jesse, you walk inside and uh, home yeah. sweet home sweet home friend. Yeah, 
I just like waver everyone in. Throw my stuff everywhere like I usually do. <laughs> just like start to do the nightly activities, get ready for bed. I uh, I walk over to my stereo and I hit the play button and crank up the death metal. Okay. <laughs> I, I show I, I show Ant where Sample the, um... comes on this time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when I go in, I, I show Ant the back room through, through the wall. That's the Jesse-sized wall. Uh, hole in the wall. And <laughs> the Jesse just Jesse-shaped as well. Yeah, it's Jesse-shaped. Like, yeah. <laughs> the phrase, I put you through a wall, has been kept a promise by Zero many times now. Uh, I go, there's, there's probably a couch somewhere out here. If you, if you feel anything that's sort of squishy and a little furry, it's probably one of the cats. Could also it's be a mouse. Snuggles. Don't move them. Maybe he'll we'll just that. take the bathtub. That works we'll too. Just uh, you're gonna have to fight. Random. You're going to have to fight the uh, the the rats for that one though. I don't really know when's the last time it's been clean and or ran. So Good luck. The, the metal is cranked. I take off my shirt. I look at my weights and I pause for a second. Then I walk towards Anton, and I whisper real close, oh, real quiet, and I get real close to his ear and I go. If the FBI was here, could they have bugged our apartment? Uh, I suppose so. Don't you think we should check that? I I can have a look. Please. <laughs> well, there's two okay. ways you guys can attack this. You can physically attack it by looking for a, a physical device. Um... Anton, you would know there's other ways to compromise, you know, regular systems in the in the building. So there's two ways to attack that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm going to start like Mission Impossible around and like looking for physical bugs because okay. I don't know any other way. That's all I've seen is like from what I've worked with, which is like physical security. So so I'm going to we had discussed your skill on this, so I'm going to allow you yeah. that skill. So okay. do that. OK, we'll start there. Uh, that's a five. Okay. You spend some time looking around. Uh, give me a notice roll as well, please. Okay. It's just going to be like the IT Ooh, crowd, like camcorder box with a <laughs> hole cut out in it. Yes. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Uh, you, so, Zero, you spend some time looking around. Um, and uh, you... Very thorough. Um, you know, you have a good grasp of the apartment. Um, you know, this is your place. Uh, well, you share... I mean, you obviously share it, but you have a good grasp of the... Uh, the layout of the place and your experience working with the police and this kind of, uh, you know, you know, you know, typically where they put something, you know what I mean? So you're checking behind the bureaus, you're checking in plants, you're checking in like in lights, Electronics. anything. Yeah. 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 You're looking for, and you don't see anything out of the ordinary. Okay. I'm pretty sure half the other rest of the house is now looking at me. Like I've got something wrong with me as I'm searching the, the cookie jar. <laughs> <laughs> He's checking each individual cookie. He's like, are any of these chips an actual camera? <laughs> uh, no, Ant's gonna open up his futuristic equivalent of the burp suite and uh, basically just go on each network and start uh, intercepting signals. Just do a, just yeah, you can do a scan them. of the general, your home, your uh, your local yeah. area network there and see if there's any co been any compromise. Yeah, anything that's new or actually just continuously broadcasting that's weird so first give me hacking uh, check and then give me a, a, a programming check please hacking first is a critical Ooh. fail Ooh. Ooh. followed by non programming which is uh much better <laughs> 17. However, however uh the 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 penalty for the critical failure is you have locked yourself out you have uh, inputted your credentials uh, wrong three times and you've essentially uh, initiated the brute force of uh, protection and you've locked yourself out of your home network for 24 hours this isn't even my network <laughs> yeah. it is though it would be considered, out of it. in your apartment here this would be considered your local area network yeah but this is I mean, exactly it's theirs. <laughs> no, oh, that's, right. that's what's funny it's not my yeah. apartment yeah that's right but it would be considered a local area uh, network. yeah so the brute force. I'm just like, where's your damn router? I'm trying to find like the actual like code on the back. <laughs> um, I, and I just the uh, damn that was not a capital A. <laughs> I type in a B instead of an eight. Um. So yeah, you have locked yourself out of the system for 24 hours. Oh God, I'm. God, I'm whilst, be tired. 
While Stanton is locking himself out of the system, I'm going to head over to my incomplete, like, opposite to the rest of the disheveled nature of the apartment, a military precision corner where everything is in its perfect place. And take off my sidearm, leave it under one side, grab a pair of not AirPods to <laughs> drown out the sound of this death metal music that I personally can't really stand. And instead, bring up my Nexus and put on some Mozart as I'm sitting there deconstructing this weapon, cleaning it. And basically, um, I'm, I'm going to have to ask if this is okay. Um, it would be fair to assume that an apartment would have a terminal of some description, just like a regular computer type thing. Um, or would that not be something that we would have? So typically, typically no. You would have some. You would use your your Nexus interface for something. Um, if you were going to be uh, doing like a computer is kind of a, is something you guys would have to buy. Like Anton specifically okay. bought one it, for his it's apartment. It's more it's more of a specialist item yeah. now than. Yeah. Because the tap so, is basically everyone's home computer, whereas like a regular okay. terminal so is think, now yeah. if you think about super it like, computer level. Yeah. If you think about it like in in our reality right now, the 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 cell phone has eliminated the need to carry a camera and a PDF and you know all those devices. It's kind of like the home computer has become a specialized item based on everybody having a Nexus implant. So Okay. Would it be fair that due to the the length of time we have lived in this apartment? that I would have had enough opportunity to be able to access the cameras freely and have it basically buzz me on my Nexus if there's motion detected. Let me think or about that. that be Let me think thing? on that because I think that's more of a specialist thing that we, like, okay. we saw, like Anton would set up for you guys. Um, let me think on it. Give me a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, no uh, so I just go to zero. I was like, do you find anything? I shake my head now. Maybe turn it up some more, just in case. You changed the music. Uh, I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to get a pump to Mozart. <laughs> no, he just did that for He just did that in his he for himself. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. In, man. You, you listen to your death metal. I'm just sitting there quietly doing my um, thing, polishing my gun. I, I kind of smirk at Anton, and I, I slap him heavily on the shoulder, and I mix up my pre-workout and, like, dump the powder in my mouth first, and then, like, chug a bottle of water. Oh, Do my whole, God, that's metal. Yeah. Yep. Do the whole like <laughs> head shake thing as I walk over to my weight set. If eggs weren't a luxury, I'd say toss an egg in there for good measure. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the protein afterwards, man. It's all right. No, well, eggs are a luxury at this point. So <laughs> um, I'm just gonna watch. This is like my TV for the night. Oh, dude! Like he starts out with Viking sets, just straight bar up over his chest, over his head. Yep. Full routine before bed. All right. Does anybody yes, yes, anything up. anybody do want to do anything significant before you guys uh, lay down for the night? And Jesse just passes out. After passing out, full after workout, little... shower, okay. protein shake, bed. You know, I'm, what I'm going to do before we go to bed is I'm going to try to call. Um, I'm going to try to call uh, Lorna one more time. Okay. Just to my nexus. I'm All just right. going to service my weapons out of you know shower. Everything's clean and pressed as a mili uh, that military position and basically gets to sleep. Okay. All right. Uh, James, it, uh, it rings and rings and rings and then uh, comes up with uh, her voicemail, essentially. All right. I'll wait for the voicemail to go. And if it's doesn't, if it still, still allows me to put, put a voicemail in, I'm going to put in a voicemail saying, Yep. Lorna, it's James. If you ever get this, we're looking for you trying to help you if you don't want to be found tell us because we're currently getting paid to try to find you reach out we're all worried about you hang up and with that i think it's a good time to run to break everybody nice transition out there that, that a little motion there you go you motion. know what you're doing you're a dm yeah you're helping me Wow. Uh, wow. Wow. It's a collaborative wow. story. Thing. That's what, it, it, that's what tabletop a... RPGs is. We're, yeah. we're collaborative storytellers. There so. we go. Um, guys, uh, what we typically do at this time is we take a five minute break and we uh, give everybody a chance to run to the restroom real quick. Um, and uh, so we'll be back in about five minutes. And does anybody have a poll question for our community while we, uh, we, while we go away? Um, let's see. Um, 
How many drugs could Jesse do if Jesse could do <laughs> drugs? Um, could do. Come on. What no, is Jesse's uh, favorite drug? <laughs> uh, no, no. I, I got a good one. I got a good one. Um, who would last longer in a uh, in a gunfight? Zero. Um, David Dave. or Ant? All right. What? Hold on. Hey. Zero. What? There we go. David. I'm a better shot than Ant. Okay. Uh, out of if you can do five options, I think you can only do uh, four. One, two, but if three, you do five four, options, five. Yeah. Who out of the whole party who 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 would last longer in a gunfight? There we go. Just because he would. Very simple. All know the me, answer. <laughs> and has dropped bodies in this campaign. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> all right, guys. Who? TOS. 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 Who would last longer <laughs> in a gunfight? Zero, David, Anton, James, or Jesse. Poll starts now. We'll see you guys in about five minutes. All right, we're just waiting for a couple of the cast members to finish up real quick. Uh, but we are getting ready to come back from that break. How's everybody doing out there in the community tonight? Um, I, see, I see a lot of familiar faces out there, a lot of... A lot of staff out there. Uh, Wolf's Blood apparently voted for Kitty. Um, that should have been an option if I could have put a 6 one in there. Probably would have been for Kitty. Uh, Atomic Zero is doing terrible, and I think that's because he got shot down by a virtual NPC. KC Fox is alive. It's good to hear, my friend. I'm, I'm glad you're here tonight. Supporting your Admiral, your newly, newly uh, promoted Admiral there. Cajun 17, thank you so much. Uh, we found that as a free to use, uh, free to use, um, uh, you know, uh, video on uh, on YouTube from an awesome creator. So we it fits this uh, the aesthetic of here, uh, you know, very well. So a lot, of, like 99.9999% of the stuff uh, that for the the art for this channel was done by a really good friend of mine, uh, One Up MG one up motion graphics he did the uh complete cgi intro video for this uh for the uh for the show and then he also uh uh he, the only thing that we had to go outside the show for is music um so pg pixel did a lot of the music for the show uh and then we use epidemic sound uh because we don't like dmca strikes here so um but mo like all the art is done by uh one up mg um, and he did an amazing job. He nailed the aesthetic that I envisioned in my mind for this, so. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, man. We're just waiting on Dr. James Dunn, I believe, at this point. Pete Orcus. And he does it royalty-free, man. He, uh... I think you're actually Orcus. You're the one that pointed me at Peachy Pixel, I believe. Yeah, he's super cool, man. Yeah, he, he um, the uh, the song for the intro in the introduction for the show is it, it, it just like absolutely fits the mood perfect, and uh, it's uh, it's good stuff. So. Thanks, Juan, man. We appreciate it, man. So while we wait for uh, while we wait for uh, Dr. James Dunn to get back, let's, let's talk about the results. I'm gonna turn on the uh, the audio for the cast, so we can we're gonna still stay on the AFK screen right now, but we can talk about uh, the poll. So for those cast guys, uh, so who would last longer in the gunfight? Can you guys guess who came out number one? I would say David. I mean, not that only. <laughs> <laughs> so David, uh, voting wise, I'm assuming it's David because the Admiral has the best following. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, and they oh, might no. be biased. Uh, so David, you have received 38% uh, of the vote as number one. Who do you guys think came in? Who came in second? That'll be me. <laughs> oh, mm. if it isn't. Actually, Orcus uh, brings up a valid good point. I think I'm the most dangerous in the fight. 
But, but uh, who comes? In, who came in number two? Who do you guys think came in second place? Zero. Uh, Jesse came in with twenty five percent of the vote. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. uh, works. All right. Who, wow. came in, who came in third? Slippery one. Just for fun, game. Huh. Anton. Anton came in third. Uh, zero came in fourth, and James Come came on. in at very last at uh, with six or seven of the vote. So the breakdown is 38% of the vote for David, 25% uh, of the vote for Jesse, 19% of the vote for Anton, 13% of the vote for Zero, and 6% of the vote for James. Loves you for no I'm still by you to ask questions about a genuine question. Yes, um, absolutely. And I, I, and I've been ravaging on about the power of the business, but what is what is it actually like in this universe? Is it like large and clunky? Is it like the crisis nano suit? Or what's it actually like? So I looked at it casually because eventually we're going to get there. So I'm going to kick this over uh, to the talking screen real quick so that we can uh, we can put some faces to the name while we wait for uh, Dr. Dean to get back. Give me one second here. Um, all right. So I did some looking at the the power armor, um, and it I envision it kind of like uh, like a Ripley suit, like Ripley's suit from uh, from Alien, uh, with, okay. with mechanical enhancements uh, or weapon weaponized enhancements at that point. Um, I think so. The great thing about the game, a game like this, Loken, is that everything can be customizable. So, like, let's say you wanted. EMP protection on it. You know what I mean? We would sit down, mm. talk about it ahead of time, or I'd come up with a monetary cost uh, associated with that with that function, and we can adapt it. You know what I mean? Um, so it's yeah, like, yeah. like we're limited here by our, our imagination, and that's it. You know what I mean? So um, part, uh, my imagination could go quite far. I, I, <laughs> you, you're, you're speaking to the choir here, man. I uh, I am I'm absolutely in the same boat because like I want to say like. I, I'll be honest with you. One of the biggest influences for this game was Ghost in the Shell. And I know not everybody has seen it, but like that. I really want them to look like arm slaves. The the chameleon armor, those kind of things, when you guys get to that point, is going to be oh. so fun to play. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, I had, I had envisioned the power armor to be a bit like this. You know the, you know the very final episodes of ST, uh, Standalone Complex when yes. they get attacked and yes. they have those arm slave suits. A bit like that. Yeah, I mean, and that's what it—that's how it could play out. You know what I mean? Like, there could be different tiers of, uh, you know, it could be like go up to full on mech. It depends on how the scenario plays out. Doctor James oh, Dunn looks like he's making an appearance. Doctor, oh my god, he's back! <laughs> I was totally thinking like Bubblegum Crisis. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the soft suits and the hard suits, like that's where I was going from. For those that don't know me, um, I, I'm a huge Mech Warrior fan, and I love the giant zombie robots. But like Gundams and like battle suits are a mm -hmm. huge part of like my heart and soul. Oh God, and, Gundam, uh, Gundam is like it, there's yeah yeah, yeah there's, there's so much fun. Show, I need to get into Gundam. There are two yeah. shows that kicked off my love: the Gundam Wing with like the Endless Waltz series, yep, and Bubblegum Crisis. One of the first RPGs I ever played was a cyberpunk mashup of Bubblegum Crisis with the rule set adept, and it was. Oh God, it was amazing. Yeah, it was like Gundam, Robotech, and uh, oh, there's that other like uh, giant robot game. What's it called? Uh, Armored Core for Armored uh, Core. PlayStation. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I feel like I feel like a BattleTech is a game is inventable yeah. on this channel at some point. Like just because so many people involved with this channel have ties to the MechWarrior community, and like I just feel like BattleTech at some point is is going to happen here. But fun, a fun, that'd be fun awesome. I was going to say a fun fun fact about it before you get I'm sure we're yeah, go absolutely. back in is that the newest version of the RPG for BattleTech which used to be called MechWire but now it's just called BattleTech RPG is actually it's it's combat mechanics are the exact same as the as the actual tabletop mechanics mm -hmm. okay. so for mech can, combat yeah for mech combat so you can literally do a mech combat tabletop rpg as an rpg with mech combat which is essentially the same as the tabletop combat system just modified for the rpg they already have that those systems rules in, in place which is cool awesome. yeah i actually I actually ran a, a time of war campaign a while back and it'd be great to run another one so <laughs> it, i mean we we got the slots we got the time slots so we uh I think I, 
<laughs> just got to make it happen. All right, guys, you guys got ready to be- get back into the story? You guys ready to yeah, continue yeah, on in the Nexus? Pitter patter. Pitter patter. All right, guys, so when we left off the break, our intrepid motley crew of heroes had laid down for the night. Um, the night passes uneventfully, and you guys wake up in the morning and uh, let me know what you're going to do uh, this morning and for the day. Does Jesse probably wakes up maybe or you as, I don't know, who knows, early as David, maybe, who knows. But uh, he's just going to do his usual morning routine, get ready. Get rid of the shakes. On. Basically, yeah, kind of like maybe pound some water, maybe like spray on some cologne, but throw on like his uh, like a garage uniform and just, you know, head out the door. Alrighty. Just head out to work. I'm going to basically you know, get up at that point. going to try and uh, go on my... Basically, I'm going to do my usual routine. So get up, you know, get dressed, get go out for a, uh, a run and a workout. I might not be zero built, but I'm still fairly strong. You know, a bit more athletic than, you know, muscular, like, you know, built. Gotcha. So, um, so lean and... Lean, in lean and, and just like functional, you know what I mean? You know, basically a, a, a well-trained soldier, you know, just in shape, ready to, you know, do whatever needs to be done. Okay. Um, get some breakfast and just basically, you know, prep myself for the day. All right. Morning is for the buys and the core, baby. Waking up, doing some uh, preacher curls, some arnold curls, some planks, some sit-ups, some Russian twists, finish off with a protein shake, double dose, and we're good to go. Double dose. Yeah, man. Okay. Uh, James probably would just wake up, have breakfast, check his nexus to see if there's any response. No response. Um, no response from the message from last night. Okay. Uh, is there any any messages from uh, Officer Caranta or no. anything else like that? No, yet. Nothing. Not yet. Okay. Because they said they did call us when it comes down to that. I think. Yeah. That by uh, end of day today. So. Yeah. Um, so uh, the only thing that you guys have so far on the, uh, the agenda for today is the two o'clock meeting at BioLink Designs. Um, uh, other than that, if there's anything you'd like to do, you let me know. Honestly, I, I personally, I'm fine. I don't need any more ammunition. I've got no more money than I had yesterday, so <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm just prep and get ready. I think it'll just make that the focus of my day, getting to this meeting. Um, mm-hmm. I'd like to do a little bit of preliminary research um, okay. and into the area around the meeting zone. Okay. So, you know, to see if I can scrounge up on the regular internet, maybe then you like, you know, Boston Google, you know, satellite pics, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. Sure. Uh, I'm going to share this with you and I'll let you know. I'll give you a pointer where it is, uh, what block area it is. Uh, so I just put a I just shared it. it. It might take you a second for the map to pop up, David. Oh. Um, but when you do, uh, actually, I got to clear. I'm going to clear all the pointers and I will sing, give you a singular pointer. Cool. Thank you. All right. So I just put it on there. Um, mm-hmm. okay. It's that block right there. So it's kind of um, it's a, a little south of where you guys were last night where they found a body um, over the mm-hmm. by that bridge. There's a large area over there, but uh, a little southwest of it is a. Uh, uh, where the shop is. Okay. And uh, would I be able to find some information about maybe any sort of like... So from from my research, would I be able to see, for example, if the shop was one story, two stories, if I'll be able to see if there are any sure. good places to me to... Sure. Maybe give, give a bit of an overwatch. You give know? me a common knowledge roll, please. Uh, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll equate that to you searching through uh, the interwebs to see what you can find about it. Woo. Sounds good. And oh! That's a 22. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Very so well documented area. As you, uh, you, you, you type uh, BioLink design into the, into the Google machine. And uh, the, the, the first website that pops up is the official website for the, uh, for the, uh, for the place. It's a tattoo parlor. Um, it is ran by 101. Um, the, who's an artist who has had his arms mechanically, uh, enhanced or cybernetically enhanced to provide an upper quality, like a, a very good quality of tattoos. Um, he does body modification and uh, uh, cosmetic body modification. I want to clarify that. Uh, and uh, tattooing, futuristic tattooing, 
uh, transdermals, that kind of thing. Um, and he's very well known. Um, as you search, um, you, uh, uh, you, you know, there's pictures of the, uh, there's pictures, uh, from inside the building, uh, David Grayson, uh, mm -hmm. from like, you know, different tattoos that have been done inside. And, uh, you, you kind of get to get a, uh, you know, you get a feeling a little bit of the, uh, you know, there's a second floor, but you're able to get a feeling of the first floor. Um, okay. It's a, it's a typical tattoo parlor. There's a couple different booths in there. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's like a reception and everything like that. Um, but you do know it's second, uh, there's a second floor to the, uh, the building. Um, however, as you're searching for information about this place, um, there's a lot of off color or, uh, different websites that keep on mentioning, uh, common phrases like, uh, neutral territory in the accords and you get to, and, and it's a very common theme, um, that, uh, there have been very famous people that have gone in there when it comes to politicians, military. Uh, there's been a lot of sightings of people going into this building, black vans parked in front of it, um, uh, that type of thing. Um, so basically what you, you're discovering out there is that um, this, this place might have a, a double purpose. Um, it probably okay. is, is, I mean, it's a legit tattoo parlor but it also has a double purpose according to uh the rumor the speculation out there on the web okay so what i'm going to do with this information is i'm going to basically first of all i'm going to take the the images i get the the pictures i've got and try to you know mentally stitch together and maybe physically stitch together a sort of pseudo layout so i know roughly what's where okay you know just so i have a, a pit not just a, a rough idea obviously it's not going to be the same as busy being there but i have a rough idea uh, and then I'm gonna so, basically that. Sorry, go. Uh, so from that, from that piecing together, uh, you know, there's two to three different stations in there, along with a, pli a private office on the first floor, um, and you do know there's a staircase uh, with a st that goes up to a second, uh, second story of the building. Um, okay. Uh, it is the building's about maybe a hundred by sixty feet, uh, two stories, uh, and like I said, it's got. It's got a bathroom and it's got, you know, a, a reception desk, a, a private office and a couple, a couple different stations for tattoo work on the first floor. Okay. Um, so with that all in, in mind, uh, I'm also going to basically just send a, uh, I, I guess a group DM to everybody because everyone's sure. doing their own things right now, but I'm just going to basically sort of get my Nexus out, just sort of send in group DM, um, send them some of, some of the pictures I've got. So they get a rough idea of what's going on as well. So everyone's around the idea of what, what's where. And just basically say, it looks like this is the real deal. You yep. know, this is there are a lot of sightings here of uh, officials and government, and all this business. Looks like it's uh, got a double purpose. We've got to stay wary today. You know, I'm just, you know, I'll send that as a message okay. to everybody. Okay, sounds good. And that's how I'm going to spend my time before we go. So everybody, when you're in respective different places, I think, Jesse, you're at the shop. Uh, you know, uh, you know, wherever you guys are, uh, your, your nexus goes off. It beeps. You see, it's a message from your friend David Grayson, um, and it's got a quick overview and a synopsis of what the information that he's found about this. Uh, so, with this synopsis and this overview, I'd like to make a roll. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see where I could set up a perch and uh, hide myself nice and snug, like a bug in a rug, as it were. So, would you prefer a shooting or a stealth roll? Um. So you're trying to figure out where to position yourself uh, yep. based on that information. Yep. Give me a, uh, let me look at your character. Hold on. Um, ba -ba -bum. I was, cause that's more of an information gathering role. Uh, so let me see, let me g give me a notice role. Cause you, if you're going to look uh, over the information he provides. Um, that's a four. All right. Let me take a look at the map. Um, boom, boom. You think there's a building next door, uh, that you, uh, you might be able to get access from, um, it's not gonna, you, you would have a hard time seeing the front door of the shop, uh, but you could definitely see the, uh, the side of the shop. Okay. 
Um, I'll slide up next to uh, David and I'll point and just kind of give him that look and nod. Okay. Um, so I, I'll I'll look over my shoulder as he points and I'll just I'll nod my head and just basically say I want to have a few locations just to be sure. We don't know if these guys are going to be set up either. I have okay. no idea what we're going up against at this point, but from what I can see. This looks like it's been used by a lot of different agencies, a lot of different people with connections, a lot of black band stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Are you just got, uh, you guys let me know what you're doing. If you're going to wait the day out or you're going to do something, let me know. I'm going to message Jesse okay. once it's all ready to go and just make sure to say, hey, Jesse, make sure you take a break at two to drive us there before two to drive us there. Would I know if I could get off for that um, that much time? I mean, you just have to talk to your pops, you know? Yeah, I just I didn't know just how strict my pops was in terms of like, oh, hey, I'm going to leave for like two hours. I'll be back. He'd let you. You think he'd let you. Okay. Um, if that's the case, then yeah, I would match his uh, James back that, uh, yeah, I'll be back in time, and I'll drive everyone over. Smiley face emoji, eggplant emoji, <laughs> thumbs up emoji. <laughs> <laughs> dot, 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 send. <laughs> Confused look on father's face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, that's happening. <laughs> Apparently, it is. What? It's it's in his mind. It's it's the face, and then an arm, and then a, and then a thumbs up. Right? That's how that works. Right? Because the way it's it's angled and everything. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So the uh, the day passes uh, pretty uneventfully. Um, you guys get to about. Uh, 115, uh, Jesse pulls out of work at about one o'clock and cruises back over to the, arrives back at the, uh, the apartment at about 115. You still got, to, so now you have two free ones. No, I, I, I would have used my free one to get to my work. Mm -hmm. And okay. then I would, how did I get this role? Would they be back from work? Yeah. And then you get a so free now one. I have another, yeah. I have one more free one. Yeah. Um, you gonna come into the into the uh, apartment? Um, I would probably get there with enough time, probably just to pick you guys up. So I would probably just be waiting in the car and be like, "Yo, I'm here." Okay. Honk, 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 honk. I will. I will. I will send a text back. Do you want me to get your? Do you want me to get your gun? I'd be like, "Yes, please." Eggplant. 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 <laughs> throwing up emoji. Beer. <laughs> party streamers. Eggplants. <laughs> Okay, I respond with uh, a question, XD face, eggplant thumbs up. Confused looking face. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I and I I go to uh, uh, you know I well I, I say David, can you get his gun? I don't want I don't want uh, to touch I'll, it. I I'll just nod my head. Just go All right, fine, fair enough. What where, where does he keep it? No, you no, know, never mind. Yeah. I don't know, I'm gonna go off into wow. his side of the of the apartments. I don't know where he keeps his stuff. I can't where I keep my stuff. His stuff is his stuff. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna head over into his apartment side of the apartment and rummage around his what few personal effects are there and, and uh, grab this uh this David, pistol. As you do this, yeah. you realize that you his whole concept of how he lives is so completely foreign to you. Everything is disarray in that room. Uh, I mean, some of the, a lot of the clothes are dirty and strewn all over the floor. Uh, there's nothing. There's no semblance of any kind of order in the room. It drives you insane. Probably find the gun like thrown into like some old food or like a drink or something like that. And it's I'm, like I'm, underneath. I'm, yeah. Oh, I'm pick up this pistol and it's got like you know freaking noodles hanging off of it. There's like, case. I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna go reason. like that. <laughs> just flick it off. And I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm going to mumble to myself, 
I have seen war zones more organized than this. This is a nightmare. <laughs> how does he? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and go. Hey, zero. How the uh, hell does he live like this? Put down the dumbbell. I turn and I kind of look, and I shrug and I go. I just don't go in there. I don't know why. I could you... throw a hand grenade and it will be tidier than this. <laughs> before yeah. I just. And I, I, what I'm going to do is before I take this gun out, I'm going to take this poor, beaten pistol, this thing, this, this, this device. I'm going to give it a bit of a quick service because I just I can't stand <laughs> seeing it in this state. I'm going to give it a service. It's driving you I'm insane, gonna, right? It's driving me yeah. insane. I cannot give this weapon in good conscience. So I'm going to just drip it. I'm going to grease it. I'm going to give it all you know, the, the once over. And then I go, ah, okay. I think now we're good. I think this would be a good way to describe psychic psychic damage to somebody. <laughs> like it's hard I, I to describe. Really gonna, gonna it's hard to describe psychic damage points. to somebody, and th like what you're feeling right now, that is psychic damage. So, <laughs> so once this is completed, I'm gonna uh, put it in a. Uh, basically, I'm gonna put my pistol in one pocket, put the other one in the other. I'm gonna go. All right, I'm ready to rock. Okay. Um. When everybody's ready, you uh, let me know when you're heading out. All right. Hey guys, call come down to the old Betsy, and she's been yeah. touched up a bit. I fixed the um, the bullet hole in the back, kind of repaired some of the scuffs in the door. Uh, I respray paint the gold spray paint, but it's like not super well blended, so you can see like the old color and the new color. <laughs> um, but it so but it it's there down. and it's remotely covered up. Uh, by repair, he means he put paper towels in the hole and then bondoed over it. I was just hey. about to say that. I was literally <laughs> about to say that. You've seen it's that too. I've literally seen that happen. Okay. It, it it works, all right. I'm a professional. For, for like a week or two. Yeah. So what means? Uh it just needs to get you past inspection and then you're good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um okay. So you guys go downstairs. Uh Jesse's there, the car is running. Uh, so I don't think you need to shut it off. It's because it's running there, Jesse. No, I've just been waiting there for the car with okay. the car on. All right, you guys get down there, and as always, are thoroughly impressed with the sight that is Betsy. I'm just at this point. I'm just uh, gonna be so used to this hoopty of a vehicle. I'm just gonna just clamber in and just I'm gonna sort of lean over behind on the back seat because I sit in the back and grab this pistol and say, "Here." I gave it some tender loving care. It might actually shoot straight now. Wait, what is this? It's called a repaired and serviced gun. It's a beautiful thing. Maybe take it's not care my gun. of it. Thing. <laughs> it isn't mine. It's yes, so... it's your gun. I uh, promise. It doesn't, it doesn't look right. <laughs> sure, it's mine. Yeah, I'm 100% <laughs> positive it's yours. I'll thrust this thing into his, into his hand. The next one I'm charging. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> It, it will. It, I look of pure horror comes over my face. He spits on this thing and shoves it, with, and with the other, without the due reverence, I'm just gonna just go. I put my hands on David's shoulder quickly from stopping him from leaping over the fucking back seat. Oh, I should spray paint it so it matches <gasps> Betsy. Yeah, okay. Go. I let him go. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just so paralyzed Whee! with just just the horror. I'm just gonna sit down. I'm just gonna go. And my hands shaking. Just gonna go. Okay, that's fine. David, it's cool. David, David, if you're uh, lucky, yes, yes, it it'll is. explode in his. It'll, it'll, if you're lucky, it'll explode in his hand when he fires it. I, I will set it up to do that if I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will deliberately make it happen. I would walk by the and we're off <laughs> again. If you want to describe psychic damage, this is it. <laughs> It's it's, it's 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 this is the closest thing you're gonna get to uh, Lovecraftian horror in this uh, in this universe is is David going slowly mad as Jesse abuses his gun. <laughs> he uses all machinery, but the gun's the worst. Oh. My God. <laughs> all right, so uh, you guys make your way, you cruise through the city. Uh, it's mid afternoon. There's not much traffic going on in the city. Uh, you know when it's light, so the freaks usually come out at night. Um, however. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the light illustrates the, the 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 disgusting area that you guys live in. I mean, you know, there's graffiti everywhere as you roll as you roll around, um, and you know, you do see good people out there. You see, you know, some locals 
trying to you know trying to eke out an existence you know there's a couple local shops down there there's you know local pizza place a couple restaurants and stuff and you know people trying to live uh you know go through their day-to-day life in the uh in this in this part of town and it's, it's a tough thing it's an uphill battle um but you guys make your way over to biolink and uh you pull up and i'm gonna I'll give you a map uh, whilst we're driving whilst we're driving by i'm gonna just sort of be leaning on the window so i just like this just looking out and just shaking my head and quietly just say to the guys I, I I went to war for this. I served for this. This is there's got to be something better than this, surely. A You're weird, not uh, dead. Right. Oh, I'm not it dead, is really. not called fat tats. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just reading this backwards. It is yeah. not called fat tats. It's not. It's called BioLink PH. and BioLink Design. But you can get some fat tats there. I just it's like to point out. <laughs> I'd just like to point out a member of our community made this map for me. That would be Orcus86. He spends his time to make some maps. Oh Thanks, Orcus. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Be nice. Yep. I yeah, he might have gotten epic. a few fat tats from there because he likes the sound. Uh, so you guys pull up to the building. It uh, The building, um, it doesn't look like much, to be perfectly honest. It's got some, you know, it's got some uh, some windows where you can like see inside the shop, but they're obviously... You know they have uh they have bars over them and then they have drop downs that will cover it um it's a very clean building uh it's that stick out it sticks out for you guys um uh, around there's not much trash on the uh on the sidewalk around the building and uh um there's no like bums and there's no like street kids playing on that like on the inner city uh the the, the store side of the block uh everything is pushed out to the other block around it so i'll immediately notice this as we drive up yeah you and to the to this location and i'm just gonna say this is a little too clean where, where, where are all the where where is everyone well where's the graffiti i'm just gonna say this aloud to the uh to the rest of the guys we didn't cross burrows did we don't no. think so no, we're the same shit <laughs> same sh i think i think this <laughs> that's this shows why this is the FBI or whoever is pretend pretending to be the FBI these days. Well, I mean, I, got a few cans. Cans. I mean, I um, got a few cans of spray paint if we want to liven it up a little bit. Jesse, but... Jesse, hmm? take your Jesse level. You're currently at like 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 a nine, nine down to like like a four. Okay, take take, take that Jesse <laughs> level down to about a four. A <laughs> four is bigger than the nine, right? No, it's lower. Small. Damn. It's like the nine, but it has a little hash on it rather than all one completed. Green. It's Got it's it. Oh. <laughs> so where the hell am I parking? Am I just gonna like boot Ant out on the curb and like peel out, or what are we doing here, boys? Why don't you come in? W well, Ant is the one who's gonna need to go in there. Um, exactly. Am I just like boot him to the uh, curb and just like drive off, or like what are we doing? Yeah, you might want to drive around the corner. I'll go in with Ant. Okay. Ant, did he say anything about going in with company? Or are you going in by yourself? I, good question. He just said meet him here at two o'clock. Uh, I was pretty sure I don't remember anyone saying anything about company. I think if anything, Mister Sausage Man, if you go in there, you're going to end up in another prison cell, but this time with company. Give me an intelligence right. check, uh, Anton, or smart. I was going to say Jesse. I'd be like, yes, please. <laughs> that is a 11. He specifically said bring your friends. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, he... I think he said to bring bring you guys along. All of us? Legit. I'll I'll sort of ask questioningly. Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's going to cool. Yeah, okay, yeah, definitely. Well, let me so Jesse, you may want to park this thing and walk in with us. We're not going in unarmed. But I want to make sure I can see it in case, you know, anyone tries to vandalize it or something. You know, it needs yep. to be like... Just park right in front. Yeah, like, why not? Just park right in front. You should be fine. Yeah, there's there's a fire hydrant right there. I mean, that's the best part to park, park right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, okay. All right. 100%. I don't know anything about traffic laws. Is that supposed to be a good thing or a bad thing? Are, are you this in character or out of character? <laughs> he's a doctor not a not not a not a traffic cop not a beat damn cop. it jim okay. 
<laughs> uh, so I'll park uh, right out in front of the building. Um, I don't, is, is technically the front of the building the right hand side or the left hand side of the picture? It's the northern part of the picture where the uh, so the, oh, door it's the northern go, part. Oh, yeah, okay. The, the door to go in. I maybe I have to re do do a little bit more. Hold on. So it's like is it like by the fire hydrant then? Yeah, it's hold on. It's being a pain in the butt. It's like right, oh, you're fine. right there. There it is. Sorry. Okay. Is oh, that okay? Is that a parking or no parking street? Because like the other side has parking spots on it, which is why I was asking. I mean, as long as you're not parked right in front of the uh the uh the, the fire hydrant, you you think you should be okay. All right, then I'll I'll park closest to the, like the closer to the left hand corner. Give me a and... give me a arrow on the map where you're parking. You know how to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, there it, there -ish. So you're you're parking in front of the building, probably about twenty feet away from the uh, or uh, from the the fire hydrant, about fifty feet away from the door. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna draw a box where your car is. Yep, right in front of the window. Yep. There you go. I can't draw a box. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. So yeah, you're you're parked right there. You guys pull up. Uh, and uh, nothing seems out of the ordinary for you the uh you see people you see somebody walking around in the shop through that uh front front window i look over at david sorry go i look over at david like waiting for like a go ahead or something i just wait i'm just gonna go look around at the uh the guys to say well, well i mean he did say everybody uh so unfortunately i'm gonna look up to zero i'm gonna leave the long gun behind uh this time and then i'm sort of gonna just not you know, just gonna sort of psych myself up a bit, just because you know I'm 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 always expecting it to be yet another trap. So I'm like right, and then I'm gonna kind of open the door, get out, and as I'm getting out, I'm just gonna have a quick look around the surrounding area, see if I see anything like anything at all. Anything no, just, glaring? Just, okay, give me a notice. Anything roll. glaringly obvious? Give me a notice roll uh, as you get out. No problem. Uh, that's a four. Uh, you take a look around, and uh, nothing looks out of the ordinary. Um. The only thing, like I said, that sticks out in your head, but you notice that as he pulled up, is this, you know, things look like they have been pushed back from this inside of this block to the other side of the road, uh, respectively, all around. As you look around, there's, you know, there's graffiti on a, a lot of the other buildings. Uh, mm. And, you know, there's the, you know, there's the bombs and there's the street people and there's the garbage and there's cars up on sim blocks and stuff like that, but not on the, this inside block where the store is. Yeah. Okay, so basically nothing, nothing's out of the ordinary. So I'm just gonna basically, you know, get out the car, do that sort of just a little quick one that months over motion, nothing, you know, nothing too uh, too uh, overt. Uh, and I'm gonna just, you know, wave the rest of the guys come out, and you know, we're gonna yep. make my way to the door. I'm gonna leave my uh, garage uh, shirt specifically in my car. Okay. Okay. Right. Game face on. You're just like a, it's basically like a dirty white beater, so. Okay. Whew. You guys walk All up right. to the door. Uh, when you get up to the door, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it swings open. You guys step into the shop and, uh, you're in a hallway that leads down. Uh, you can tell it, it leads down to like a kind of a reception area. Um, uh, you know, it goes about 20 feet into the building and on the right hand side, <coughs> you can see the desk, the overlap of a desk, you know, coming out into the hallway. Uh, and uh, you see a reception area. All right, I'll I'll walk up ahead and go to the reception. All right. So when you when you get up to the desk, uh, there's a there's an Android there. The Android looks at you and goes, Ah, is this your first time at Biolink Design, sir? Uh, yes, I believe we have an appointment for two o'clock. Now this would is this for design work? I don't believe so. No. Ah, for so you're here for our other services, um, sir. Do you or you any of your party have a weapon on you? No. Don't lie to him. He's just gonna scan us. All right. All right. Fine. Yeah, sure. I it's and so he lives at the wall here and he uh he opens a safe like uh it's like a section off safe there's names there's like you know uh writing above each of them and he goes sir if you'll deposit your weapons in here uh we will uh we will give them back when you uh leave this facility 
I don't know if I feel comfortable with that. I don't think any of us feel comfortable with that. Then, unfortunately, sir, you will have to leave the premises. I'm going to bring up my tap and try and access it to try and override this line of programming. <laughs> you oh, standing in front of it? <laughs> You're standing in front of it doing this? The balls. Where else am I? Uh, well, I'll turn around, I guess. <laughs> I just look away from uh-huh. Give me, uh-huh. a, Give me a self check. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Stealth? Oh, God, I don't have stealth. All right. Uh-huh. So. I'll stand in front of his back. <laughs> All right, that's a zero. Let's bang. <laughs> Try oh, it. Do it. Burn it I believe in you. Let's go. Zero. Again. One more. You're going to keep going to get a negative uh, natural one. Oh, wow, that's closer. <laughs> I need that explosion. One. Come on. I'm going to say two more. There's the six. <laughs> oh, there it four. is. Hey. Uh, yes. And minus two for the eight. <laughs> Sir. That is crazy. I. You said this is your first time in here, correct? Huh? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make this very clear for you and as politely as I can. Where you're standing on is neutral ground. If you make any attempt to alter the programming in this building or make any violent act, you will be deconned in this building. Yeah, okay. Yep, you know what? Here, Here's mine. It's just it's fine. It's just there right, you go. Nice. Our, nice other, our other services that have been retained have been for a neutral meeting on this neutral ground. Okay. If you... That makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> Any negative action taken on this property will be met with unparalleled violence. And he's saying this with a complete smile on his face. (laughs) Hmm. With a sort of a a murderous, sort of like knowing grin, I'm just going to go, murderous violence, eh? All right, fair enough. And before I uh, get to take the gun out, my Glock out, put it on, very deliberately punk it onto the table. Okay. And get out the four spare mags, put them down. Then you get that stun battered out, put that down. <laughs> and I'm just going to go, lads, don't worry about it. Very worst good, sir. happens. Very good, Worst sir. happens, I was trained to use these. Uh, so he takes the weapons and he deposits them in the locker. Well, does anybody else have any weapons on them that they, they would like to put? Either put, you know, you can leave them outside or you can leave them in, the, in this locker. Combat knife and pistol. Extra yeah, mag. I put... Yeah. I put away my stun baton and that's it. Okay. Once put you guys deposit all the weapons in there, the uh, who who would like to use their signature to release this? I'll just step forward and say I'll use it. David. Okay. So <laughs> he closes the door and uh, turns the handle on the lock uh, and he indicates for you to put your nexus up to the thing. And he says, your, your belongings have been secured, sir, and they will only be released to your nexus. Uh, guard uh-huh. your nexus well. Uh, but you, it please... <laughs> Enjoy our hospitality and understand that you are safe here in this building. I'm just uh-huh. sort of, I'm very polite to say thank you very much whilst putting my thing up so my neck is up so the signature is, uh, is, is registered. Uh, this should be interesting, guys. <clears throat> 101 will be with you in, a, in just a minute. Uh, if you guys would like to sit, uh, you know, just hang out for a second, uh, 101 will be with you shortly. As you guys look around the room, uh, from your vantage point over by the desk, you can see uh, uh, he points you over to uh, this, this some couches uh, just to a little farther out from you. It would be on your left hand side as you walk or walk into the room. Uh, so there's some couches for you to sit down over there. You do see a door uh, to, uh, from your vantage point over to the right a little bit, and it looks like it goes into a private uh, uh, office uh, in front of you are three different stations. Uh, they are, uh, they appear to be bottom modification stations. Uh, uh, you know, there's a, there's a chair that you would sit in, uh, and you know, Dr. James Dunn, you've, you've heard of these. I mean, you're very familiar. Um, they're very similar to a medical, uh, a medical, uh, station, uh, but they mm-hmm. more, it's, it's not about saving lives here. It's about, it's, it's about the modif- modification and, and making, uh, cosmetic changes to somebody. So, yeah. Uh, the instruments and the tools of the trade uh, are there. Um, you guys take a seat. After a couple minutes, uh, uh, a gentleman walks out of the office, and uh, this gentleman uh, very clearly has 
two augmented arms. He's wearing about a, a two thirds of a jacket under. Uh, he's got a bl uh, blue and gray uh, wife beater on, and uh, his the collar of his uh, uh, coat comes up to just above his chin line, and it's uh, highlighted on in neon green. Uh, on the right side of his head, he has an aug that looks like it's going directly into his cranium. It comes down by his right ear and traces his jawline. Uh, and he smiles, um, and you get the feeling it's a genuine smile, uh, as he walks out and, uh, he, who, uh, he walks over to the closest person at this point. Um, so whoever you guys decide you wanted to be closer. Jesse would just like run up and be like, oh my God, can I get a pair of those? Look at them. Oh my God. Look at, are they just, are they real? Can I touch them? Are they like, can, may I, can I shake your hand? Like, are they super strong? I'll, I'll, Giant I'll, 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 grabs Jesse by the top of the head and pulls him ah! back. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry about that. Welcome to Bio Ink Design. Uh, so, Anton, are you here? Present. Okay. Um. Normally, and. and so like you guys get a good feeling from him you don't get like you don't get like a, a negative feeling from him. he goes normally we see when people retain our services for the our other services here and he does it in air quotes um the clientele i mean i don't want to be rude but it looks like I, the clientele is usually you have a lot more money um but it, it looks like the service has been paid by the other party for for this interaction however i want you to know What people pay for in this location, and it's inviolate, is this is neutral ground in this city. I've had I've had law enforcement, I've had local mob, I've had anybody you can think of in, that needs to negotiate and use the, use our services. Our my father before me, his father before him. This was been neutral ground for hundreds of years. And by the accords, if any violence is done on this property, your your life and your family's life is forfeit. That being said, I give you my word of honor that nothing will be happened to you while on this property. Are you uh, okay to go forward with this meeting? Not. I'll sort of have a, uh, have a a morbid chuckle at the uh, family part, and go, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'll be uh, great if I had any. Yeah, we're good. All right. Your other party well, has already arrived. They're upstairs, and I will lead you up there. And uh, uh, I'll set you guys up with uh, anything you may need. <clears throat> so as you guys look, um, uh, he leads you through a door. Uh, he hits a. He walks over to one of the stations. Hits a button on the station, and a door pops open over by uh where the couches are uh so the door pops open uh and he he beckons you in and he he leads you into that room when you walk into that room there's a conference there's a small conference table uh and there's a set of stairs going up he leads you up the stairs and i have to share this with you um as you guys go upstairs uh the you go up, you know, you're going up to the second floor. Uh, you go up two, uh, two uh, flights of stairs. Um, you get to a desk uh, and there is a uh, there's a computer terminal at the desk. Uh, there's a Nexus reader and there's a gentleman sitting there with an AK-47 sitting on top of the uh, on top of the desk. Um, uh, when you walk up to the desk, uh, you know, 101 leads you up to the desk and says, can you please check in with this gentleman? Um, and, uh, so the, the gentleman with a perfect smile, uh, looks up at you and says, can one by one, can you please present your nexuses? Show my nexus. Show mine. All right. So Same. there's a little sensor on the mm -hmm. desk. What you typically do is go up and scan it. Um, uh, walk. sorry, go on. No, no, good. I was just going to walk up and scan it and we'll just have a quick eye at the AK and go oh, classic. Uh, Not cool. classic. Actually, this one is of a very high quality David Grayson. Oh, it is? Superior quality weapon. Mmm. All right. 
well, the the David's trained eye will cotton onto this and be impressed by this weapon, and it'll just nod, like, mm, you know, it's a nice quality, and just walk off. He 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 catches your eye, and, you know, notices that you're you you know you know you noticed it, and uh, he just kind of smiles at you in return, <laughs> and uh, he says, "Membership has its benefits, my friend." Certainly um, does. So. The room you're in is a long room. It's about uh, 60 feet long, uh, and you see two doors to the north and a door to the uh, on the uh, southern wall, which I got to open up because I thought I did. Um, uh, with some, uh, there's some couches in that room as a waiting room. However, they uh, 101 directs you to the uh, the room uh, uh, to the north of you, um, and as you guys walk in, you see a large conference area. Um, you. There's a large tea tabled uh, conference area, enough to seat probably 40 or 50 people in the room. Um, however, there's about 10 chairs, maybe 12 chairs in there right now. Um, there's computer terminals along the desk. Um, and there is conferencing. Uh, there's uh, monitors on the wall for conferencing. And it uh, um, and there's a gentleman sitting at the, uh, the top of the tea. Uh, I will... I'll put a pointer. He's sitting at the the, the, the top of the T before one of the computer terminals. Uh, the man uh, is... He's a bigger guy. He's not... He's not like a huge guy. He's a, he's a bigger guy. Um, very well dressed. Very nice suit on. Um, he's got uh, a couple visible augs on him. Um, and uh, they go along his throat. And you see uh, wires coming from his throat going down into uh, below the suit going down into his body. Um, I guess the best way to describe him would be slightly overweight. Um, but uh, he doesn't look to be in bad shape. Um, he uh, completely bald. Um, it looks like, you know, there's a little bit of a, a shadow on there. So he probably takes it down with a razor uh, pretty often. Uh, long beard. And... Uh, um his hands are also um are also uh physically augmented um and as you as the door opens and he looks up you can see him on the terminal uh you know typing in commands and moving uh some virtual uh, windows around and uh he smiles as you all into the room and he says one one thank you so much uh your services are always uh professional and i appreciate it uh could you send in some uh some water and uh maybe some snacks for us i'm not sure how long we're gonna be here one one smiles nods his head walks out uh and the gentleman stands up and he goes why don't you guys have a seat where you're comfortable okay i'll take a seat i'll, I'll, I'll take, a... take this seat that's directly opposite the gentleman Okay. On the other side. Okay, so I'm going to sit next to Loken on his right. Okay. Okay. Are there windows to this room, or is it just the screen on the right? That's just the screen on the right. Okay, so there's no windows? There's no windows in this room. Okay. Loken, give me a notice roll, and mm -hmm. Anton, please give me a notice roll. Actually, zero yeah, you as well. Okay. I'm going to take a Benny and re-roll that if you don't mind. That's a bit. And it gets a nine. Fail. Hang on. Okay. Me spend Fail with thirty-seven bennies. Because I rolled a three and I didn't roll for anything else. I'm just going to take a Benny and just do it again if you don't mind. Da -da -da -da. And boof. That's a little more style. A seven. There we go. Okay. So. David Grayson and Anton, you guys noticed two different, very different things in the room. I mean, they're they're in the similar vein, but Anton, you look around the room and you notice a lot of the equipment in the room is anti-surveillance uh, equipment. Um, you think a lot of devices in there are to stop uh, from people from prying into the into the room uh, through electronic or you know mundane means. Um, and David, you uh, you notice that this room has been set up uh, so that uh, you've seen rooms like this before. Uh, it's usually 
uh, re 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 uh, referred to as a skiff. So electronic surveillance and uh, it's a secure room, essentially. Yeah. Uh, when the doors close, they hermetically seal. Um, you know, there's you, you you look around, you see there's air handlers in there in there in case of any um, any biological threat, and you also notice some very conspicuous uh, panels uh, that you think might open in case something was going down. Okay, I'm I'm gonna sort of have a glance around the place and just go well. Certainly rolled out the welcome wagon, didn't you? This is a bloody bunker, this. I was going to say this aloud. You know. 101 definitely, uh, I mean, this place is, uh, this place definitely is secure. This is, uh, uh since I've been in a room like this. <clears throat> so you, uh, you might ask, wonder why I've asked you here. Specifically you, Anton. I think I know why, but feel free to enlighten on the rest no, of us. No, let me know. What? Let me know why you think you're here. I'd, I'd be interested to hear. I mean, sure. I as you as you're talking, I, I I cut in. I cut in. You're the queen, a, a lizard alien coming to destroy us all. <sighs> I will order <laughs> this me guy. This guy. You got jokes, James Dunn. Dr. James Dunn. Oh, forgive me. Forgive me. I did notice that in your file. Uh, did we get to know your name by any chance, Mr. All in due time. Cool. 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 Sorry, Ant. I didn't mean to cut in, cut, in, cut in you, but I wanted to make sure he wasn't controlling you with his mind rays. No, no worries, man. Th th thanks. So I'm just sort of like staring him down now. <laughs> were were you going to call him an alien, listen, lizard alien as well? <laughs> listen, listen, listen. <laughs> gentleman's question. Listen, I understand you guys might be a little nervous at this point. I, c I completely understand. I would be if I was in your shoes as well. A, you know, a strange man walks up to your car and says, you must meet with this shadowy figure. And then you come to this place you've never been. And, you know, you see this, this type of environment. Why are you here? Anton, why are you here? Tell me why you're here. I mean, to be honest, I don't really know. We're, I'm, we're just a bunch of class fours. I didn't think we'd get this treatment for some petty crimes or petty interesting way of thinking about it petty we, we're just an investigation and what are you investigating right now that requires you to break into a, a clinic well it just so happens that your clinic showed up in a missing person's case and who is missing I lean forward and I look at the rest of the group and I go, does the name Lorna strike you? So he takes a deep breath. Lorna, Lorna, Lorna. That girl. All kinds of calamity in the, in the hide recently over Lorna. Familiar. I'm familiar. Your name got mixed up in this. My name. Your company. I don't know. Uh, Lorna has put out so much information, her and Scorpio. It's been such a bother. Such a thorn in my side. Did you kill her? No, nah, no, I haven't killed her. We're just paid to find her. That's all. What if... What if I paid you not to find her? Depends on the money. I'm looking at James very seriously after that. 
Yeah, man. Hey, wait, wait. hey. What hey. if I paid you to walk away from the situation, knowing that no harm would come to her from me or my organization? Or you could just tell us where she is. What if I don't know where she is? Well, you seem to have an interest in her. You're wrapped up in this. I think I more I'm have cool. an interest in keeping her quiet. But that doesn't always have to be done with violence, does it? Like yeah, I said, point. we're looking for her. We're also friends of hers. If you look in those files of yours, I'm sure you'll. Oh, I'm. I'm well that. aware. I am well aware. We just want to make sure she's safe. We want to get paid. Reputation is very important on the streets. Oh, you should know that. That I do understand. Uh, that and is something I definitely understand. Blowing a job like this doesn't give us a good reputation. So what's the nature of the job? It's just finding her. As far as uh, as far as we're, you're concerned, yes, finding her for what an interested party. What are the exact terms of the job? Finding her for an interesting party. Does that mean interested party? I actually don't remember the exact term, but I remember it was finding finding her. <laughs> Do we have like a like a contract or something like that we can pull up? Hold on, uh... the book has come out. Yes, <laughs> the sacred book, all of the crackhead notes that can only be read upside down while Jesse is 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 four sheets to the wind. Right, he's got uh, that. He's got that drunk recall. It just yeah, yeah. Right. It takes me a while to fit through all of it. Hold on. Unless Mike <laughs> wants to just give it to us a different way, but yeah, I have it in here somewhere. Yeah, because I honestly can't remember what the terms of condition of the contract was at this point. It's been a long time. Give me a smarts roll. Anybody who wants to try to figure it out. Okay. Okay, I will boop. Sure. I will do a smarts roll as well. I hit a five. I had a five. James got a five as well. And gets a four to be the weird one. <laughs> yeah, old's very smart. Smart. Uh, so the terms of the contract where you find out whether she's living or dead, um, and uh, just make contact, and just uh. You know, it like try to find it, figure out what's going on. Okay, so we okay. didn't have to bring her back. Okay. Okay, so you I'm, didn't specifically I'm, I'm, have to bring her back. I'm gonna um give this information to uh, the other party and just basically say, well, the contract details were quite clear. We had to ascertain her whereabouts, whether or not she was alive or dead, and make contact. That was it. That's all we needed to do. Interesting. What if I can put my considerable resources to finding Lorna, have her contact you, and provide with you with proof for your for your for your source at the cost of you guys walking away from this and not pursuing it and maybe owing me a favor. Hey man, we really want a friend back too. I mean, this is professional, but this is our friend. It's uh just just because he might be in you know, someone might have her now. If you have her, someone still has her. You know what I mean? Jesse, let's talk about this what? later. Let's talk about it later. Well, not, I am not letting some Jesse. other person take her. Jesse. You can do what you want. I do, mean, do you have a lead that can magically? Do you have a lead you can magically pull out your ass? No, but I'm not letting some other person in some big room tell us something to do about our friend. Jesse, Jesse you, should, remember the wall. you should look in your. You should probably listen to your friend, Doctor James Dunn. Thank you. Yeah, you all should know by now. Uh, I don't listen. How about I give you a counter argument or a counter offer? I'm I'm here and willing to negotiate as long. As we can both agree on terms. You seem like a man with considerable resources, but you may always need some help. Well, that's, that why, I'm not I, saying, that's why I said the not, favor. 
Well, I'm not saying that we do a favor for free. But it wouldn't work be. for you. It wouldn't be a favor for free. It would be part of the cost of me using my considerable resources to find this in my own way. So it might not rub the wrong people the way, uh, the wrong people the wrong way like you've been doing. Is it that magic salad guy? Because he's nuts. Like, absolutely oh, fucking insane. Scorpio is nuts. I know you're exactly guy, who you're talking about. You, you you didn't send them to go kill his, his men to go... You, those weren't your men, right? Because I don't know if they're coming back from that. Those were not my men. I'm well okay. aware what happened, and it was interesting to see how all that panned out. But those were not my men. So, you know our skills, as they are. I mean... I'm a really fast runner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for an upstart crew, I wouldn't say they were bad. Which is why we're sitting down here. Listen, there's so much violence in this world. It's a it's day-to-day -day life down here. Regardless of my vocation, shall I say, I can, I would prefer to solve anything with, uh, without violence. Trust me, as someone of my stature and my morality, violence is the last thing I want. I just want to make sure my friend is safe. I'm sure she's capable of handling herself. And we have a job to ascertain whether she's alive or dead and return that information. Zero, give me a, As, uh, real quick, give me a uh, Streetwise. Yep. Uh, that's a four. You've been sitting back and you've been looking at this person in front of you. And yeah, just, watch them. just watching them. And you, you have noticed certain things about him, some char characteristics that um, lead you to conclusion. Um, okay. This is the boss of the boss of the boss of the boss of the person you owe money to. Um, this gentleman you have heard through law enforcement operates within the city with pretty much impunity. His name is Zaratus Kalade. And he pretty much heads up the family in the, in, in the city. Okay. So this is something you would know based on your line of work. So he didn't send an underling. This is actually him. Yep. Interesting. Okay. James, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's all right. Dr. I, James. I think... Dr. James, you didn't go to middle school for 14 years to be called James Dunn. Exactly. Uh, I'll say, well, I'm, I certainly am in, interested in this, uh, in this arrangement, but I will discuss with my colleagues here if that's okay, uh, so we can make sure... I can make sure Jesse doesn't do anything stupid. I look over at Jesse. My terms. But my terms are you walk away from this investigation. I provide proof, whether I find her living or dead, of what happened or what's where she currently is. Proof that you can take back to your your source. Uh, so that you can complete your job. I, you owe me a favor and I pay you a certain amount. That's fine. As long as the amount is, you know, we still got to eat. You're a man of your in incredible resources. Being able to set this meeting up and everything could easily afford measly fees from, from, from uh, a crew like ourselves. Well, how does this number sound? He takes out a piece of pa uh, book with a piece of paper, puts a face down on the table, and slides it a little in front of him. Okay. I reach over and pull it up, and I kind of As flip it up. you got to walk around the table. You guys are like 25 feet apart. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, it's, it's on the other side. I thought he slipped in front of us. So yeah. Well, I mean, he, he slipped it in front of him. him. But he's twenty five feet away from you across yeah, the table. Yeah. It's a big table. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna push I'm gonna push it back and, and walk back over over to him, kind of like adjust the coat. The little crack thing, walk up and very carefully 
put my hand on it, flip it up, and look at the the the, the, um, the number. And with that, the Nexus connection. I knew has it. Closed. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Son of a gun. Oh, I, knew it was, I knew it was coming. I knew it. I'm like, where is he going to do it? Where is he going to yeah. do it? I just, on the paper. Gripped on the paper. For it, man. <laughs> <laughs> all the paper. On the paper, it just says, "You, uh, psych, you're all about to die." Charles <laughs> <laughs> well, comes down from the ceiling. Like, <laughs> I don't like loose ends. So I don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. Um, so I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes. This is truly, truly neutral ground. If you guys had done an aggressive back in here, your party would mm -hmm. be dead right now. I'm just, oh yeah. Yeah. You guys would be dead. Um, so hey, my David integration instincts were, were true. <laughs> you, <laughs> I gave you the one chance in there. I gave you one chance when Anton tried to, tried to hack yeah. it because I mean, like, let's okay. So let's think about this from the proprietor's point of view, right? You got to give people a chance, right? You got to. You know, somebody mm -hmm. walks into the shop the first time, they don't know the rules of the road. They try to, they slip up once. You give them the rules of the road. You give them, hey, listen, that's not gonna fly in here. Then if you continue, then bad shit happens. But mm -hmm. from like when I think about it from an NPC standpoint, because I've thought about this place for a long time, and I'm like, okay, because they're gonna try something when they go in there. But I gotta give him one shot. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so. Uh <laughs> but uh so this uh, it's kind of funny because this uh the shop is based off of something. I'm gonna tell you guys down the line. Um I don't want to ruin anything for you now, but uh I really like it. But uh, how, guys, how are we thinking? What what I can't brain. I'm so excited. <laughs> like I'm so excited. I love that interaction. Um so what do you guys think? What do you uh let's uh let's go through what the cast is thinking right now and let's start with uh it particularly looked like it affected uh, Jesse Reigns. So let's start with Jesse Reigns. Oh boy. With, see what your character's thinking at this uh, point. So the, the easy the, the easy part of Jesse, Jesse is uh, uh, maybe to a stupid level, uh, very protective and loyal to friends. Mm -hmm. So there is no number on that piece of paper in Jesse's mind that would literally allow him to walk away from this without kicking and screaming in a fight. But so, he's giving you everything you want. He's not giving what Jesse wants. What is That's so? The what problem. is what is he not giving you that Jesse wants? Jesse well, wants his friend back. Jesse wants his friend safe. He wants all of his friends safe. That's that's his whole big thing. Uh, he uh, he literally the the block he grew up on and the friends he had. That's his entire life. Unlike everyone else, he didn't go anywhere. That was it. Yeah. So Straight that townie. is his townie. family. Yeah, I mean, his family and his friends are all his family. So, like, there's nothing outside of her being safe and free, and he knows it, that, like, is ever going to, like, please him. So, that's just Jesse's line. That's where he is. He might be stupid, he might be a crackhead, but on some level, he's loyal. Um, me, as a player, I'm loving this. Like, this is everything I could ever want, and I, I wish I could be a different character right now, just so I could, like, really <laughs> bathe into it. But, uh... <laughs> No, th I love this. I love this interaction. I love this place. I love like what next week is gonna be like because I can only imagine like I I'm like already like drooling at the mouth of, like all the discussion that could be happening with all the detail. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I I'm I'm loving this. This 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 was a good episode or a good session. Okay, let's uh let's drop over to David Grayson. So, from a player perspective, I'll give you even player. Perspective. As a person, I'll give you David's perspective. So from, from Flair's perspective, this is going to be one of the most engaging episodes I've engaged with in the while. Actually, awesome. I've really, <laughs> really enjoyed this because we've had some motion, we've some full momentum with the story, and we've met some new interesting characters. And I really, really enjoyed this one. This one was good. Um, from David's perspective, David is looking over at this this gentleman, and he's obviously got means. He's obviously got resources, and he is perfectly okay with the idea of basically having this this deal done he wants to know david wants to know what happens genuinely but is completely fine with the terms and conditions of letting it go moving on getting paid getting paid by the other guys but he wants to take it one step further and actually it was I mean, this, this is again this is a guy who has resources right this is right. a guy who has connections i why i want to work with this guy this guy's got money and the opportunity to give me a good you know, income good wage Use my skills to the best advantage and david's 
done this a this is a this is an old road i've worked you know he's worked with military intelligence he's worked with spooks he's worked with this it's nothing it's nothing new yeah. so to him this is this is this is a good arrangement what this about the moral standpoint of you growing up with lorna how does that affect your decision in this is it a factor had at it, all had it had it not been for the fact that i my uh, david has gone off he has had personal tragedy occurred to him and has become very hardened to the up the facts of the world it would bother him but it doesn't anymore he is used to this black ops work has hardened him to messy this kind of thing. Messy. Mm -hmm. it's messy it gets messy you can't be too sentimental all right zero um i think that bring turning stone tonight was the boss of the boss of the boss of the boss meeting us one person and it set off a lot of tells to him the fact that he showed up in person regardless of how confident or what he's saying um it really grabs me in a certain way when he's willing to sit down and negotiate with us as opposed to some underling like that that's red smoke right there you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so but uh it's good times and i've been having a lot of fun with it the story is like it, it's getting to that climax. Like, I'm feeling it rise, that crescendo for, uh, yeah, all the things. Awesome. All right. Let's jump over to Dr. <laughs> James Dunn. Uh, so, James is, he knows what Jesse is thinking because Jesse is a sentimentalist. He also knows that the two professionals, Zero and uh, uh, David, uh, are are more about what can be done with this whole thing you know, like like what can they get out of this yeah he doesn't know how ant's doing except for i'm sure he's he thinks that ant is currently going oh fuck 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 like over and over and over again in his head just repeating it over and over again yep um but uh he in his mind uh james is like well lorna's a very resourceful woman she's likely alive and even if he wants her dead he'll pro she'll probably outmaneuver him because she seems to have outmaneuvered everybody else yep so in his mind he's like i gotta get the job done and i'm no good to lorna dead <laughs> this guy has resources this guy is someone i need to, we need to we need to talk talk about okay. so flatter the hell out of this guy get him on our side so that we don't have to you know deal with the consequences of not being uh uh poor or <laughs> being poor i should say okay um you know and having no job pr prospects taking taking what we can okay man of the show anton what are you thinking man <laughs> how's he character what's what's going on with you doc and what's your character thinking at this point uh this has just been such a wild ride and i don't want to get off it like <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just testing my brain in every single sense of the word yeah and it's just a book that i don't want to put down you know nice i i, I just want to keep playing i want to just try and figure out all of this and just every week is torture having to wait until <laughs> next the next monday to see to see what happens next it, it's just like that weekly show it's like tune in next week to find out what happens i was just like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they it in in next that. week. I don't <laughs> wanna. <laughs> awesome. Then you, then you just go sulk in the corner. But yeah. Um. Uh, you? Yeah. Yeah. Your character. Just, I want to. I want to see where your character's head at right now. He, ha he. Every single time he makes an estimation of who he's dealing with, he underestimates. Is and he'll just be like. <laughs> so it's like okay, I'm dealing here, and then he'll figure out. I was like okay, I guess we're dealing with here. But then it moves up again. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, I'm dealing with these people. And then it moves up again. Okay, I'm dealing with these. And all the while, like every single time his bar moves up, it's always just been all the way up here. And he never really figures that out. And he's just finally reaching to the point where he's like, to the, the point where he realizes who he's dealing with now, that he's sufficiently scared to, <laughs> and just trying to figure out what happened. Like he's just like, Cause like he like he walked in the door. It was just like, cause neutral ground to him just meant like okay, some parking lot where we agree not to shoot each other. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like okay, fine, I'll just hack this droid and then we can bring our guns. And then it's just like 
oh, okay, this is this type of place. Okay. <laughs> and then it's just like the the state around it and the money. Every like I said, every single thing that he sees is like bumping up that is that level of I should be scared, I should be scared, I should be scared to be scared. complete breaking point. Like that's that, that's the thing. He's like Every single time he's like set that thing, so it's like, okay, I'm dealing with these people. I know what to do. Okay, maybe I don't. And then something happens. It's like, okay, I'm dealing with these people. I know what to do. And then it just keeps raising and he keeps making these mistakes because he thinks he knows the level he should be working at. And all the time he, he's just been way under these people. So that's a very good point. And so uh, one of the, for anybody who's ever DM'd, you have plateau fatigue, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's definitely a plateau fatigue. So when I, I'm trying to attack this a little different. And without elaborating too much, I'm trying to attack it. I'm trying to world build and give you persistent characters in this world where you can expect certain things. It's so hard for me to say. Like, I can't, I, I, I don't have the right words for what I'm saying. I would like to, after the season ends, do like we did with uh, Tabletop Tavern 1 and go back and do a retrospective and you guys can ask me questions about what was going behind going on behind the scenes like i think i had a lot of fun doing that the other day um and i like i know some of our community had a lot of questions about the show and too so you know that was a really cool thing um i want to do that i wish i could show you guys i have a flow chart and an org chart for all the npcs that i have currently built in this world and it's it's literally Charlie from It's Sunny in Philadelphia. It's like, you know, when he's like, when he's like tying anything with strings, <laughs> yeah. like yeah, that's right. literally what it's like. Um, I should block oh out, goodness. I should make a copy of block out all the names so you guys can see like strings going everywhere. But um, <laughs> I, I'm glad you guys like you feel like you're making progress because that's a big thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about this before. World building is a huge thing, but like I want you guys to have a grasp and breath of this, of how, how intricate this world is and what you're getting yourself into. Um, but, uh, I'm having a lot of fun tonight was one of my favorite episodes being able to, you know, play somebody play this character, that, that particular character and a couple of the other characters too. So, um, so I'm glad you guys are enjoying the story chat. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as the cast. Um, you know, um, I look forward to next Monday being, being able to get back into this. So Dr. James Gunn can raise that piece of paper take a look down at the paper and uh we'll see and if shout he's... run see. run fly you fools <laughs> fly, you run. Run. he's trying to take all the xp for himself <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he literally just reads it and faints yeah <laughs> it'll be that much it'll be like oh okay, one then we'll set up a dollar uh, one dollar <laughs> It's just it's just gonna be the, the smart what? scene. Like, does, does yeah. this place have a cone of silence? He yeah. just like reads the paper, <laughs> walks <laughs> off, and starts screaming. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and he comes back to the table, thinking like no one's heard him. All right, guys. So my name is Mike. This is the Howard Nerd Channel. We do TTRPG content on this channel. Sunday nights is our flagship show, Tabletop Tavern One. It's a high fantasy Pathfinder game. Uh, and we are in season three on episode 44 or 45 of that show. Uh, Monday nights is reserved for this Neural Nexus Zero, which is our cyberpunk adventure set in 1980s Boston uh, using the Savage World system played remotely using the Fantasy Grounds framework. Uh, we are in episode 11 or 12, and we'll be back at episode 12 next 12? week or 13 next week. Oh, lucky 13. Ooh, oh, 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 uh, oh. This was 12. What was it? He's uh, looking it up. This is yeah. This was this was week. eleven. So next week is twelve. I'll save all the big shit for thirteen. Okay, you guys can skip oh, next week. No, <laughs> next week is twelve. Yeah. Um, so uh, Wednesdays we have Tabletop Tavern Two, which is our second high fantasy game uh, set in uh, Corvosa, uh, and it is another Pathfinder game. Thursday nights is our Tales from the Tavern, where we sit down with people in the TTRPG community. And we fucking talk nerd with them. That's all we do. We talk nerd for a couple hours. Um, and then we, uh, like I said before, Jesse Reigns is current or Atomic Zero is working on a, we're putting together a fantasy flight uh, Star Wars game that's going to be run on Tuesday nights. Uh, we are in week three or four, three of interviews right now. This, this is the fourth. No, this is, 
this is the fourth hell? week, yeah. This is the fourth week, okay. All right. Yeah, so we have we at least had a... one more after that, too. Okay, all right. Um, so we are working on putting another game together. That game will be live most likely October, November, December, somewhere around that time frame. And then we also started talking about two other games, but we'll leave that. We'll, we'll tease this Star Wars for right now. That's what we'll do. But guys, thank you as always for coming out and supporting us. Hype Train Level 5 to start the night. Uh, you guys support us amazingly, and we really do appreciate it. Um, we're going to go raid these people. They're playing the Rick and Morty D&D 5th Edition. Uh, 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 <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! Seriously, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I actually, I, oh, yeah. I actually own the content too. Like, I'd like to play this at time. It's uh, uh, oh, no. so their name is Quest and Chaos, and they uh, but you know, we're gonna go show them some love. So when we get over there, guys, drop those rat emotes. Let them know you're coming from. You know, uh, represent how I nerd in our community, and uh, let's go show them some love. So I'm gonna kick that over. I'm gonna start that raid. We're gonna go over to the ending screen, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, Wednesday night for Tabletop Tavern 2. And uh, we'll see you next week in the Nexus, guys. Thanks.